like I say, everybody that wants to chime in tonight, please go ahead and chime in. <clears throat> this is just going to be an open space like it always is. You know, I pretty much let people get on the mic and do their thing. And as long as you're not being disrespectful to the space, which most of the time nobody is, you know, we just pretty much let people go and have their way. So I want to talk about last night. DJ, you in the spot? Yeah, I'm up in the big dog. What's the word, everybody? Black first reparations up. What's the word? I'm sending you an invite to be the co-host. So we got a couple speakers up here. So, and brother, I'm trying to. It's hard to pronounce your name. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. Is it? You most likely talking about me, brother. Uh, it's Kashama, but you can call me Sankofa. Sankofa. My last name. Okay. Yeah. So we got Sankofa up in the in the spot. He's a um. He's gonna be a speaker tonight as well. And so, like I say. We got quite a few people up in the spot tonight, so we can have. So we're gonna have more. I'm just gonna talk about that election yesterday. From mom, our understanding that um Marcel, his name was left out on quite a few ballots yesterday. His name was left out. They misspelled his name. They didn't include his whole name. They had his middle name. They had his first name. So it was a lot of real shady stuff that was going on yesterday with how they did those ballots up there in South Carolina. Also, um. I heard Afro Elite, he was speaking to Tariq Nasheed, and he was saying that when they were up there trying to, you know, pass out information and stuff for Marcel, they were told to get back 200 feet, get back 500 feet, get back 1,000 feet. So they really had a, they really had a hard time getting a lot of traction up there in South Carolina. And you got to go ahead and, and, and give your props to, you know, we think that he's just an old hand. Give your props to um, Clyburn because he, he pulled out all the stops yesterday. He made sure that he had every advantage working for him, and I mean that's a that he's a sly old fox. So I have to give him give him his due on that much. I mean, he made sure that <laughs> that, that that the chances Marcel had of, of defeating him was slim to none. I mean, him and the Democrats they didn't bring Kamala up there for nothing. Like they really they really had they really mastered the way they set up a trap yesterday, and unfortunately, you know, it was Marcel's first time, so. And your first time in, in the amount of time that he actually had the actual, um, you know, actually declared himself running for this, for the Congress spot, he did damn well and stuff considering all of the obstacles that he had, that he was facing. So like I say, give Clyburn credit. He pulled out all the stops. It wasn't just him. It's a reason that he had his daughter in such a high position up there. I forgot his daughter's title up there, but she had some position in she was in charge of something with the Democratic Party up there. So it was the thing. Talking about that. Minion? Is that you, Kid Gravity? Yeah. Talking about Minion? Talking about who now? Fiber's the Minion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His daughter, his Minion, whatever you want to call her, yeah. No, I think I think you're talking about the other one, Jennifer. Um, I'm going to look it up because Minion, whatever her name is, I think she got like a... Um, I think she got like a federal position, and I think it's um, Jennifer Clyburn or something like that. Jay Clyburn is the one who is um, with the party, but I'm about to look it up right now. Well, one of them, one of them was in charge of something with the Democrat Party. It was over some key position yesterday, key position that she was appointed to. Like how in the hell we don't even know how that worked, but you know, it, it was like nepotism almost like that. And she was a, she was ahead of this high high position or whatever. Go ahead, DJ, and then explain it to us. Unmute your mic. No, actually, I'm about to just uh, go ahead and look for the information as well, and I'm going to just post it to the Jungle Trunk. Give me a second, because I'm working on, you know, this account is really on my second one, but I, give me a second. Okay. Uh, I was, yeah, I was just about to say, I think that brother's right, because I just looked up Jennifer Clyburn, and she is actually a federal co-chair of um something. So they don't say nothing about her um, being with the, D the Democratic Party. So I think he, that brother might be right in his mid now, but when that other brother put it on the um, jumbotron, we'll all see. Okay, yeah, it, it was one of them. I, I like I say, it, he has a couple daughters because when that whole thing was leaked a couple months ago about him, him, um, him uh, appropriating funds and stuff like that, that he, both of the daughters got some of the money, they husbands, the grandson, and everything else. So, like I say, props to this dude here. Like as much as. As much as we know that he sh he he shuffles and he tap dances and this and that, he showed that he's not as dumb as he looks. I mean, 
like I say, he was he was prepared. It was an old political move that he pu- he pulled out, and like I say, he he was able to catch people napping yesterday. He really did. He had it set up. He set that up from the beginning. He saw this coming months ago. He saw the push that Marcel was making. So he said, "Let me go ahead." And I'm sure he he got in touch with his cronies and his flunkies, and he was saying that, "Well, hey, this dude name ain't gonna be on all of these ballots here in, in the district and whatnot." And not only that, they like I say, they was mixing up his name. His name wasn't on all the ballots. It was some um, real some real crazy stuff that was going up there in South Carolina. So next time Marcel runs, and I, I, I do believe he's going to run, this we need to go ahead and plan this thing out a year in advance before he ever, ever, you know, officially go ahead and say, I'm going to run. We need to go ahead and, and map this stuff out. We need to go ahead and set up a planning agenda because right now the, the, the boule class the, and the black baby boomers and the um, – and, and, the, and the, the pork chop preachers and stuff like that, they're going to play a major role block in this. Like I say, Clyburn's 82, but you still got quite a bit of black baby boomers and stuff. And the black boule that they're still flexing their muscle right now. And they show this. I mean, this was like I said, this was something you knew they he knew they was in trouble. So they had Kamala come out there. What type of deal he might have made with her in terms of what he's going to do, what agenda he's going to boost. We don't know yet. And I'm sure that'll be available to us soon in the near future. So, is anybody that wants to say something real quick or anything? Also, if you guys are in the space, go ahead and tweet out the space. Go ahead and tweet out the space for us. Hey, uh, just real quick, Todd. I don't know how you want to work the jumbotron. You want me to just uh, go easy or just go ham on it real quick? Because it's a lot of information, bro. Let's go easy on it for right now. Let's go ahead and start because I know you say you was in that and you was in that space with um that space earlier. Just go ahead and share some of the stuff that you heard. Yeah, I'm actually trying to get uh see if I could get Tamara back up. Hope she ain't going back to sleep. You know, early down in the south and end, Marcel. If y'all can calmly do it, everybody just tweet Marcel, tweet Tamara real quick, tweet Nas, t- tweet uh Alexis. And I think uh, Alexis said she had to go to work or something, but tweet her anyway. You know what I mean? Tweet them decent, you know, this uh, show or whatever, or this space, and have them come back up and just reiterate what it was they said on their show as well, because I don't want to take their talker points as much, because it seems like some of it is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I don't want to say proprietary, but that's the only thing I can think of, because, you know, they say everything that's going on, they feel like this election was a grip. I think it was stolen, man. I'll, I'll think that as well, too, but go ahead. Okay. Well, yeah, like I said, um, I think I think coming up that um like I said we need to go ahead and set an agenda set a plan up and like I say right now we know that the, the the baby boomer vote that vote is gone you can't get that vote what he has to concentrate on he has to concentrate on trying to at least get half of the um the, the Gen Xs and and taking the millennials and, and the Generation Z votes those are those are the only ways that he can really but then that's not just for him that's for any black politician that's a grassroots candidate you have to go ahead. And you pretty much have to concede the black baby boomer vote. You have to concede that you're not getting the baby boomer vote. You also, like I said, you still got the boule out there that flexes that muscle. Um, I've always heard there was something like over 5,000 black boule members in the country, all throughout the, the United States and stuff like that, because we know that they were formed in the fraternity years and you had some major, major power brokers that was in the boule. We don't know really still to this day who really is a boule member. It's still a secret society. We don't know how exactly how much clout and power we got, but I can assume that they must have quite a bit. So like I say, you have to focus on Marcel. If I was him and when he ran again, anybody in that district in high school that's a senior, I'm going and I'm talking to, I'm going to their high school, I'm going to the football games, I'm going to the basketball games, I'm going to the malls, I'm going to the junior colleges, I'm going to the colleges, the HBCUs, as well as hitting up the internet, Twitter, and all these other places, because you have to go ahead and, like I say, and you have to somehow, because even even with the with the uh, with, with uh, generation um what is it uh, generation uh generation X, it's still quite a bit of generation X because I fall into that generation. It's still quite a bit of us that's still in that Democrat wagon too. So you have to go ahead and try to split that vote. I'm not sure if you're going to win, get that entire vote, but you got to be able to try to split it. And we were talking about something yesterday and stuff, even even how these, um, we know the 501s and with the churches and stuff like that, and we know that a lot of times that churches can't get too political. 
but I would even look into even like start like I mean trying to connect with a church or something like that because yeah you can't get too political but you still let's be for real these churches they're on their own code in terms of who they're going to vote for so they they have their little ballots made up and this and that and they know so you got to kind of almost you, you have to attack you have to come with your own grassroots plan like I say and that's getting your own churches and your own your own uh base on the actual ground to try to do some stuff just can't i mean like i said he did an excellent job but like i say his campaign was you know it wasn't like he, he campaigned for an entire year or so it was a it was a campaign most of us didn't hear about him until probably april you know some of us maybe a little bit before that but most of us really didn't hear about marcel to about april and for what for him to do what he did you know you have to tip your hat to him you definitely have to tip your hat to him and i do that and like i say i wasn't the least bit disappointed in his campaign you know i felt pretty good i, I you know, of course, you wanted him to win, but I felt he did a he did a great job for you know for being somebody that just came pretty much out the blue, being a teacher, being an educator, and going against somebody one of the most powerful politicians, and a, 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 you talk about a trillion dollar party behind you. You know, I think he did damn good. Like I said, and I and I truly believe there was a lot of funny stuff going on in that. Saying Kofi, did you have anything you wanted to add? Go ahead, brother. I'm mute your mic. We we on the same frequency, my brother. Um, yeah, brother, what you saying is absolutely correct. Like I um I was telling somebody that I'm glad that I, I paid attention to this election and I did it, you know, in a group. I did it with, with other black people who are like minded because I was able to to see the bigger picture. We have two more years, you know what I'm saying, to continue to build up steam. This is the momentum that we've had in this short of time for Brother Marcel. And um, as far as Clyburn, man, I think the fact that he had to resort to such nasty tricks is another indication that um, that you know that that he he was threatened. And I think if I was a betting man, I would certainly bet that he's a member of the Boule. You know, um, he's part of that whole clique with the fraternities and the churches and all that stuff. And many of those institutions, they're, they're becoming obsolete. And um, we, we, yeah, we, we can't we can't try to um, pull them on. We're going to move forward and look to the future. But, I, yeah, I land my plan with that one, though, brother. No doubt about that. I'm a betting man. I would definitely have to say that he definitely is part of the boule. Look, I, most of them, like, I think most of the ones in the Democrat Party, and I, and and. I would say the Republican too, even though you don't have the same amount with the Republican, but yeah, I would definitely, it's, it's no doubt about that. Like I said, the, the bad thing is, like I say, you constantly see the black, black baby boomers just vote against their own interests. It's like, Hey, a lot of them feel like I've lived my life. I've done all I can do. You know, it's up to y'all to go ahead and, and carry on and do something and this and that. Like they have a complete disregard for the next generations coming behind them. They have gone for the past 50, 60 years voted for a bunch of do-nothings, have nothing to show for it, and now they're pretty much leaving us all on our own. Jim Clyburn should be somewhere retired on in some retirement home somewhere, yet he's still hanging on to a six, seven-figure salary, sitting up here signing nonsense, trying to get it passed through his bills and whatnot, totally content that he could tell the President of the United States that he doesn't want anything in return for his service, for him or his people, and we're just sitting up here, we're just going along with this nonsense. And it's just, like I say, th but this is part of course for them. They only they, they only pretty much focus on themselves. And, and like I say, they have left behind a legacy of, of basically zero for us. We go ahead. Everything, everything now that we're trying to do, we have to build it up from scratch ourselves. Because they haven't left anything. They haven't left a blueprint of success for us to follow. So it's all up to us, pretty much. And, you know, that, that part is the absolute worst part of it like i said marcel and um tamara they both were grassroots candidates and tamara i know she had a her her election in the what last month she had to go against raphael warnock another another you know person in the democrat party and of course warnock doesn't have the same kind of cash say that somebody like um clyburn has but he still has a backing of a major party he still has a backing of of the Democrat Party, which is, I mean, both of these parties are trillion dollar parties. So the fact that, you know, he had that backing and she was in Georgia, she was a woman going against him, 
and, and now you got Warnock and you got Herschel Walker going against each other. And it's like, I mean, it's like dumb and dumber going on. So I don't, I don't know exactly who's going to win that. I, I could care less who wins it. Neither one of them are going to do anything for you. You believe that Herschel has so much contempt for black people. And then you got Raphael who will sit up there and just play matador with the bull, just totally sidestepping every question you ask him about anything tangible. Anytime you, anytime you ask Raphael, he's quick to go ahead and point out, well, the other groups, the other groups, these groups, these people. So you get no direct or straight answer from this guy right here. And you get none from Clyde Byrne either. So, like I said, it's time for us to actually form a coalition. I would like to actually speak to Marcel and Tamara about how we can go ahead and form a grassroots coalition for candidates. People that we can actually go ahead and, um, you know, go ahead and vet, go ahead and, and, and get them the uh, resources that they need as long as they're following the agenda and the code that we ourselves set for them. I think we need to go ahead and try to do that as much as possible. Coach M, I see, Coach Mark, I see you up in the up in the house. I just saw you up in the house. I know you were talking about speaking earlier. You want me to go ahead and make you a speaker? Or are you good for right now? Because I know you was talking about speaking. I'll well, send you an invite anyways. But you can't you can't depend on you can't depend on these boule Negroes. They have showed you time and time again that they will take a knife and they will stick it in your back. And they will stick it in your back over a goddamn party. A party who ain't shit, who hadn't done anything for you. They said, and the bad thing, they talk about how bad the Republicans are. And this is the party of damn slave owners themselves. And segregationists. I mean, please, these Dixie crass, I mean, how they jump ship and went from one party to another. There's no difference between these people here, man. Absolutely no difference. Oh, Coach Mark, I see you. Can you hear me? That's you. Yeah, I can hear you, Coach Mark. You trying to speak? I'm. I'm. I'm going to speak a little bit. Uh, whenever something you know, I can actually elaborate on. But I'm going to sit back and listen okay. right now. Okay. I, I just saw. I saw your. Um, your mic moving or whatever a little bit, so I didn't know if you were trying to speak or, or whatnot. But when you're ready to speak, just go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead, just mute your mic for now and raise your hand whenever you're ready to speak or whatever. Okay, thank you. Now, to my understanding, it was in there something like two hundred fifty thousand registered voters in that district, but only what what forty fifty thousand or whatever sixty thousand may have voted. So the voter turnout was low as hell. So I don't know what was going on with that. They had, a, and of course, in, 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 in midterms, you have a, a low voter turnout anyway, but the voter turnout was low. And I, like I say, I, I'm not trusting this. I'm from Florida, from a place where they steal elections like all the time. So I'm not exactly, I want to see how they, how these votes are actually counted up. And I mean, because that this is such, this is a state election, I know you're not going to have people really, and it's not a governor's race, you're not going to have people really crying for, uh, screaming for a recall, but Definitely, this is something that should really be looked into because, I, you know, I'm not saying that, that 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 Marcel won anything like that, but I'm not so sure that he didn't get much more votes than he's been getting credit for. That's that's my main thing there. That I feel that there was a lot of a lot of deceit, a lot of unscrupulous behavior being displayed by by the Democrats and this and that. And these are the main ones. That, that always talk about the Republicans and voter suppression and this and that. And they just, they did, they, they brand the voter suppression in South Carolina. They went ahead and like I say, they deliberately, they worked together and they conspired to keep this man's name off of ballots. They conspired to, to screw his name up. I'm sure they did a lot of voter intimidation with a lot of people that was out there trying to vote and whatnot. So I'm like, I'm like totally just, you know, Totally a little bit just off by the, the behavior that they display, like I say, but it's not surprising because when you're dealing with a, with a career politician like somebody like like uh, Clyburn, he knows all the tricks of the trades. I mean, <laughs> he's not just Biden boy for no reason. He knows exactly how the game works. And like I say, I believe that this is a, a big time learning experience for Marcel. I believe that this will make him a better candidate and a better a better man to go ahead and get this job from him too because this dude can't hang on forever man 
This dude is 80 some years old. He's on borrowed time. How much longer does he have? How much longer can he really keep? He has no fire already in, in, in the oven right now. So he's just barely getting around, getting around, getting by. Go ahead, Sinclair. Yeah, I think we should definitely keep an eye on whoever he's going to try to hand it off to as well. I've heard some names drop, like Bakari um, Sellers by somebody in another space. I went over and looked at his page. He over there talking trash. Um, you know, there's rumors about, you know, him trying to make a dynasty out of, out of them daughters of his or whatever. I think we should definitely keep our eyes on that and don't don't stop leaning on them. Like you and whoever you choose, you know what I'm saying, got to go. We should be rising up against. Yeah, now, but Bakari Sellers, like, I mean, from what I know about him, I mean, he always seemed like he was completely like a, a, a tool, basically, for the Democratic Party and whatnot. So the daughters, that might be a hustle that he may potentially try to use or whatever. Um, it's interesting. Like I said, we need to try to make sure we keep Marcel right in the line, in the public's eye. Like, don't let him go too far or whatever, and just try to keep him in the public's eye or whatnot. I don't... Um, the daughters, that'd be an interesting play right there. I don't know exactly how that would play out, but I'm sure he's probably been grooming him. And like, I'm sure, like you said, he probably has somebody that he's tried to groom and tried to um, trying to get in that position or whatever. So we definitely gonna, that's definitely something that we're going to be looking out for. Like I said, that's definitely something. And whoever it is, I'm sure it'll be another Boulay candidate. Unfortunately for them, they won't be able to get another baby, another black baby boom up in there to go ahead and, and mess everything up for everybody else. But I'm sure they'll be plotting and scheming and trying and this and that. So definitely, what's the next major? Does anybody know when the Karen Bass um, election in California is? Because I heard something about a runoff or whatever. Does anybody know anything about that? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Tata. Yeah, just a chime in. I'm sorry, we were uh, sharing stuff to the Jumbotron. But just to chime in on the California thing, I'm not sure what uh, runoff you might be talking about, but a lot of uh, folks, particularly it seems like black women, are mad at the current uh, Mayor Caruso over Angela, I mean, over Karen Bass. And, you know, they, they over there saying that, you know, black men hate black women and all this other stuff, and they cursing out Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg and a couple of other prominent celebrities for sign with this new Mayor Caruso, but... What has Karen Bass done for people in over in Compton and LA and all this stuff? It was specifically for black men, let alone black people as a collective. But I'll find that information out in a second. But I was gonna say that's probably that now. that's probably a good amount of information for the Jumbotron for right now, bro. So right. that, yeah. But um, like I said, well, uh, just, just just look at the Jumbotron, the uh, first two that's on the left right there. That's what Marcel was talking about as far as Clapper's relatives working for the you know, certain parts of the government, you know, like we said, that's nepotism, and obviously that's against the law, so you could call it any ethics committee or voting committee and report that, or at least have them look into it. Specifically, I think the FBI really need to look into the shit, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, anybody that's in the space, like I say, if you guys, anybody that's in the space, go ahead and please tweet out the space to any of your, um, to your followers or anything, go ahead and let them, um, let them know that you, um, you're in the space right now, and anybody that wants to speak, go ahead and raise your hand to speak. And also, if you guys have not, please go ahead and follow News Toter. Follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Facebook at News Toter. You can follow us on Instagram as well at News Toter. Also, you, um, I'm going to end up putting the, um, putting my newsletter up in the Jumbotron, so you can go ahead and follow that. Also, follow us on YouTube, too. I'm also going to put the, um, the um, YouTube so, uh, YouTube um, channel in there as well. Okay, um, Shepard Wolf, I see you got your hand up. I'll mute your mic. Yeah, what up? What's going on? Well, let's uh, let's have an interesting conversation, man. Let's you know, look at things from a few different perspectives. Um, y'all know I'm not a fan of Marcel. Not personally, it's just business. I'm not a fan. I don't. I don't. You know, agree with him as a politician, it's not personal, right? If you're in this space in politics, you're gonna have people that's not gonna agree with you. Your ideology might not line up with theirs, but it ain't personal. I'm a content creator. So, so, so what, hold on, so hold what on, particularly, hold on, hold on, hold on. What particularly you don't agree with? Oh. Hold on, fellas, hold on, fellas. Coach, what's going on? What's going on, Shepard Wolf? 
Just let the brother speak. Hold your talking points, Coach, and you can get back at him on the next comment. Raise your hand, everybody, if you want to speak. Go ahead, uh, Shepard. All right. So I'm a black nationalist. I ain't a Republican. I ain't definitely ain't no motherfucking Democrat. I despise Clyde Burr. Despise him. I was in rooms with him 11 years ago telling him that he wasn't doing shit for the black community. Like, I've been around the block. I'm 15 years in politics. 15 years in, on the street, in the communities, in campaigns. We run campaigns. That's what we do. That's what my company does. That's what the people I'm around do right now. And I ain't no young head. Feel me? Like, um... You know, I have a different perspective because I'm a black nationalist. That's what I claim, you know. Um, I just see things differently, man. I think we missed an opportunity to, to, to chop Clyburn's head off. And people may disagree with the fact that you think Marcel was the best candidate for that. I disagree. But that's just a disagreement. I'm still a black nationalist. I'm not an immigrant. I'm motherfucking Princeville, North Carolina. Great, great 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 grandfather masons great great grandmothers eastern stars you know i got a long legacy legacy uh, uh of being a foundational black american but i disagree on major things with the movement and we're gonna have that we had that in the black panthers we had that in core we had that in in every organization that ever existed it's gonna be people i, I just seen it with y'all in uh, b1 it's a disagreement we still brothers we still family but in disagreement, there are people that go harder to get their point across. I'm just one of the people in the space that goes super hard to get my point across. And and I won't never be stopped from getting my, my shit off because I'm a content creator. So I was on the ground in South Carolina three different times. I didn't like what I saw on the ground from my personal experience of doing this professionally. Now, some of y'all got professions that y'all do, and you know your profession. I'm not going to come in and tell you about your profession because you, if you're an electrician, I can't go stick my hand in a bunch of wires and tell you what the fuck you're doing. So I'm not going to be told what is happening when I'm seeing it for myself. So my issues at this point is organizational, right? That type of shit could be fixed, whether I like Marcel or not. The organizational flaws in his campaign can be fixed. First time he ran, like, like everybody said, he did a lot of things in a short period of time. But let's not make no excuses. If you got the right man for the job, you got the right shooter, or you don't. You ain't getting a lot of chances in this space to be a shooter. That's that's just not how this space works. Even if you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent, you're not getting a lot of chances. Ross Perot was an Independent. He got three chances at the presidency as an Independent. He got the most votes he could ever get for independent, which was 5% of the national vote. And then he was out of here. You don't get more chances. So Marcel don't have a lot more chances. This is some one of my main issues about the reparations movement. A lot of people in the reparations movement that speak in spaces and clubhouse and Twitter are conservatives. That's a big deal. Not because you're conservative, you can be anything you want. It's because there's a conservative ideology and there's conservative talking points that go into the reparations cake. I'm not political. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a conservative. I'm, I'm all for 2A. I don't like a... I vibe with conservatism. That's not the issue. Can you have Coach um, ask him the questions that he was um, going to ask him? Because I don't wait, think wait, he... Wait, 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 wait. Let him, let him finish because he's going to end up... Um... He's going to go ahead and finish this in a second. Then y'all go ahead and chime in. Let him, you know, we don't agree with him. Just go ahead and let him finish his thing. I don't think it's a matter of agreement if he's repeating himself at this point. Yeah, but we respect people here in this space. Just raise your hand, hold your talking points. You know, it's not that he's rambling on about your bunch of anything. And he really not repeating himself. I'm a very good listener. I do music for a living, uh, Sankofa. So just hold your talking points, raise your hand. We'll get to also, you DJ, team. DJ, I sent you a DM, so check that DM out. You get a chance. Gotcha. Go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Shepard Wolf, go ahead and try to kind of unwind your, your point a little bit so we can have a rebuttal to it. But go ahead. Yeah, 30 seconds on that, Shepard. 30 seconds, bro. Organizationally, I got a problem with the issue with, with Marcel. He got caught in a lie about canvassing. 150,000 to 200,000 doors. It's almost impossible to do that with the way he says he was set up. He doesn't have any pictures of 50 or 100 canvases. He doesn't have any expenditures for um, fans. He doesn't have the expenditures for signs. 
and, and lit. He doesn't have the proof that he canvassed that many doors. I've canvassed the most in my work in 15 years was 100,000 doors. That's what my team did. It was 350 of us, and it took two months. And we asked tied every. He's got $100,000 left in his account, which is two-thirds of the money that y'all donated to him. He has not expended that money. The last two weeks of the campaign, he had the money. He was supposed to expend it hiring poll workers. You need 200 poll workers for District 6, at least. And it's a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. job. You need at least 200 people. You need about three supervisors, and you need all the trans transport to get people where they need to need to be monitored and checked on. They need to be fed. They need to have water. It's a very fucking hard job at, to, to, to manage poll workers. So he didn't do that. Why does he have 110? In my business right here, we call that a sandbag. When you don't spend the rest of your campaign money and you hold it, you are deliberately sandbagging the end of your campaign. Last point, he did not do the Sunday before Tuesday big articles in the newspapers that you are supposed to do as a candidate. It's crucial that you do this to get people for name recognition. These are just three points about his organization that don't jive. Having $110,000 left on the day of the election makes no sense. This is how we spend the money. We hire 50 to 100 people, even if we don't need them, because we can't keep that money. It's against the law. We have to get that money out in the community. So what we do is we hire people, we buy food from restaurants, we gotta get rid of all that money has to go. That's the law. So now you can, the only thing you can do with that money is donate it to a nonprofit or send it back to the people that donated in the, in the first place. But he's sitting on the money. It's a red flag in my industry. You got to get rid of that money. You cannot hold that money at the end. So why did he hold the money? Nobody has an answer for that question. It doesn't make sense in my industry. So that's why people are going at him real hard right now. The f oh, scam by holding in my business, that's a... Huge red flag. You cannot hold $110,000 donations. He had a whole month. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, Shepard, hold on. Yeah. But he could have got Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Shepard, I'm going to accept you. Shepard, you're going to get it. Now you're just kind of repeating yourself, bro, about, you know, but we understand. All right, bro, I'm done, man. I've explained myself. Let, 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 let coach or somebody else chime in. But no, you can stay up there. Just let somebody wait, else get a talk. Yeah, because I, I want you to We yeah, got two hours there, bro. Wait, hold on. I want you to stay up here so because somebody's going to rebuttal and I'm going to give you a chance to actually come back. No, and I ain't explain. going nowhere. Yeah, but I mean, I'm going to say this right here. I, Shepard, hold on. Let me speak. Wait, 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 wait. I will say this right here. Shepard did come in and he has, whether we agree with what he's saying and we think it's BS, he has come in here and he has brought some energy into the space right here. Like he is actually going and because he's going in like that, now we got people that actually want to raise their hand and speak. So, like I say, I want to hear more about this because I don't agree with it. But hey, you know what I'm saying? He's entitled to his opinion. And I'm not going to go ahead. I'm going to let y'all in the space also. Because we're all going to ask questions or whatever. So it's good that he came in here with some energy. Now the space is getting a little bit lively or whatever. So, okay, that that's fine. And that's good. That's what space is supposed to be. This is supposed to be for, for, for conversation and discussion and whatnot, dialogue. So I know a lot of people here don't agree with that. But... That's why everybody getting their hands up and whatnot. They're going to get a chance to speak or whatever. But before we do that, like I say, please go ahead and subscribe to us on Twitter. And also, everybody in this space, go ahead and go ahead and tweet this space out to your followers right now. If you're in there, Shepard, you got followers, go ahead and tweet it out to them. Everybody that's in there, a quick tweet, just to let them know that you're in the space. That will help us. And also, anybody that wants to contribute to News Total on Cash App, it is... It is Dollar sign news total. That's dollar sign news total. News total is the largest news aggregator of black content in America. That is dollar sign news total. That anybody that wants to contribute to us on Cash App, if you got a dollar that you don't mind spending, go ahead and spend it with us. That's dollar sign at news total. I will repeat that again. Dollar sign news total. Dollar sign news total. San Coco, you're next. Then we're gonna go um pro black and we're gonna go Mr. Engaging. No, brother. I just I wanted folks to ask a question. Coach was What's next. that now? Coach was next. I wanted him to ask his questions. Now, my question is... Oh, coach, my question, okay. coach, you next. Yes. Okay, coach. My questions, my questions are not a rebuttal, but, uh, but I do want to ask some important questions. The first question 
I have is whose campaign did you work for and did, did your candidate win? Go in on My candidate win. For seventy, I've been doing it for fifty. You breaking up, cuz? I got a seventy thirty percent and doing it for fifty. We lose, we losing you. You breaking up for fifteen. Hey. Yeah, can you hear us? Hey, Shepard, can you hear us? Shepard. Yeah, he got connected. He just dropped out. I think, did not to speak for him, I think he said he got a 70 30 record, something like that. And he's been doing it for 50 years or something like that, or 15 or 50 years. I'm yeah. Not sure. I, I, I definitely I want hear, him to come back. I hear that. I want him to come back. I hear that. Uh, you know, but I'm a coach. So, you know, with with coaching, if a guy says, you know, hey, I dropped 40, I dropped 50. Okay, what school did you play at? Where did you drop this 40 and 50 at? And can I look it up? Can I see if you were a part of that campaign where – because because we always have to check people when they come in and they throwing out numbers because he has a lot of insight. But who did you do it for? Did your candidate win? I asked him a specific question. Did your candidate win? So I just want to see, does he have the, the winning formula? Because like in coaching, just because you have experience don't mean that you win. Just because you have knowledge don't mean that you win it because you have to evolve along with how the game is played. And the same thing in politics. Politics is a game. They change the rules all the time. So you have to find out what the particular rules are to try to win that game. For instance, like Barack Obama did uh, back when he ran, he changed the game with all of the sponsorships, the different types of grassroots sponsorships that came in and he ended up raising more money than his other candidates had. So therefore, he had more television time. He had more this. He had more that. He had more resources. He had more people on the ground, which this brother who was just on here, he just spoke about, about having more people on the ground. And so right at the end, when he when Obama needed that push, he was able to put his resources into that push, into the people, into the grassroots, Therefore, he came out a winner, and he did hey, it two times brother? consecutive. Brother Coach, did you hear my answer? Because I was breaking up. You said. In here, I, we didn't get the chance to hear your answer, sir. Okay, I've been doing this for fifteen years. I've got about a 70, 30 percentage, seventy percent winning, thirty losing percentage. It's hard to quantify. If you're a winner or loser in the space by your percentage, especially when you work for independent, Dem and conservative candidates. So it's not like I work for all Dems and I can say, well, all my Dems won or, you know, I've walk, worked across space because I'm apolitical. For y'all who don't understand or don't know what apolitical means is that I don't believe in the process as it is in a democratic you know, America type shit. Like, I don't really believe in it. You know, I participated because that's part of the bag. But I don't, I don't, it's a transfer of wealth. Elections transfer of wealth. So to answer your question, 70-30, I'm decent at my job, man. I, I, do, I do a decent job for Kennedy. Ready? Right. Uh, and let me just ask this here before I, because I, I want to ask this question here. So basically what you're trying to imply, Shepard, and I don't want to, I don't want to uh, misquote you or, or, or take your words out of context. But in your opinion, you're saying that Marcel is basically grifting, that he's basically, is basically almost scamming the community. So this is this is the difficult part, right? Because it's too early to say that for one hundred percent that this is exactly what he's doing. His next steps over the next week will determine his character. And let me explain. There's only three avenues that Marcel can go 
by the law of how we play this game. One, he could donate the $110,000 to a nonprofit of his choice. Most of the candidates that I know that hold back and donate the money to a nonprofit, they get a check, a kickback check for from the nonprofit on the back end, which is a grip. The second way he can do it is he can return the $110,000 to all of the supporters and they still believe in him for a second run based on the results they just saw they can get they can donate to his next campaign all over again now those are the two lawful ways you can get around you can do with this money there ain't no other ways that this they're all illegal now the third way which is not legal and not illegal but it's a great grift area oh he could be a candidate a perpetual candidate for the rest of his life and he could, he could say every hotel he stay in, every time he spent gas, he could run as an independent in this shit right here. Has no chance of winning, but he can use all that money on himself. I'm not saying he's going to do any of these three things, but there are only three ways he can use the money, if that answers your question, brother. Now, the only thing, only reason I say that, brother, is that people, when they, they you know, when you came and you mentioned that, that, you know, people going to automatically assume that you're saying that, hey, Things ain't on the up and up. That's why I asked you that question because because people are gonna say, well, he put it out there. He the one said it. So, you know, I get what you're saying because I believe somebody posted that earlier today, something like that, and I didn't get a chance to respond to it. But um, I'm just letting you know that when you you say something like that, you know, you're gonna have people that's gonna be like, hey, let let let's go in or whatever. Hey, New Strata, you know I follow you. I fuck with you. I walked into the belly of the beast on my own, not scared of it, what anybody said. I came in this room on my own. I sent you a DM. I said, yo, you know, I come through. I'm not a Marcel supporter, but, you know, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I ain't really worried about all that because I know what I'm talking about. Oh, no disrespect, brother. Like like I said, you, you're entitled to your opinion. Hey, all I'm saying, like you said, you are in the belly of the beast, though. And hey, you got a couple hands up that's kind of waking to, you know, to holler at you and see what's up. So, this is gonna be the order. Um, Let's go, coach. Okay, coach. Um, did you? Because I had you. I, I think it's, it's saying Kofa's next. I, I had one more. I had one more question. Go ahead, coach, and add one, one more question. But before you go, let me say it's gonna be you, then San Kofa. It's gonna be pro black, Mister Engaging, and then Shantae. Go ahead, okay. coach. So, so I see that you are. Um, organizational uh you have an analytical mind and you you're you're organizing what what is it about marcel's campaign what specifically one thing that you would i know you just mentioned something already and i took a note of that what could marcel do better uh to to get his name out and his campaign out to get a better result than what we received this time. Because I I really believe that there's going to be a second run and he is going to do better. Uh, then the second part of the second question is, how do you feel about respirations personally? Oh, I'll answer the second question first because that's a no-brainer. I mean, we owe, we owe, just the fuck, you know? <laughs> it ain't even a no brand for racism to do. Uh, it, end, of, end of story. Um, I, now, the first part of the question is, is a little more difficult because in my experience, uh, uh, Mr. Dixon was supposed to try to run for a city council seat, a state delegate seat, a state assembly person, uh, something that was a step before this step. Now, when Mr. Dixon uh, had a sort of back and forth screaming match with uh, the Clyburn camp at an event, he was inspired to run. And that triggered the, the, the spirit that's in him to fight and fight and fight this. Food. So he just naturally had an opportunity and he took it. It's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's actually pretty dope. Like, I don't discourage anybody. But if you're looking at it from an organizational standpoint, I'll tell you what he did not have and how he can do better. He didn't have one city school board. There's about seven major cities that is in District 6. He didn't have no, no city council members 
you know, on his team. These are people I've talked to that want Clyburn the fuck out of there for the same reason Marcel Marcel does. He didn't have any any nonprofit, any unions, working unions. Uh, when the issue came up with the water, he wasn't already involved with any city. Every single city has a different water system. So he didn't know anything about the different cities. He wasn't plugged in with anybody on the ground in the cities. So we cast a wide net over every single Democrat when they are, there are six or seven cities in District 6, and he wasn't plugged in with not one person on any of the boards and commissions, the city councils, the mayors of the different cities, like nobody, none of the assembly people, none of the delegates, none of the state senators, forget federal. He didn't even get his foot in the door on a state level, on a street level. Like even him being an educator, he didn't have a teacher's union behind him wearing his T-shirts. Uh, there are things like that that are really important when you're running as the grassroots. And that's one of the things that where he failed to, to capture the imagination of the main people that will be on the ground that also have local election, that also are precinct bosses, that also have grassroots people in the communities that don't like Clyburn. So there was a lot of flaws in his his structure of how he networked. What he tended to lean towards was big arguments against the big bosses, the big people on Twitter and, and, and social media, the big blue checks. He went after them, and that is what influencers do, not necessarily politicians. So there's a fine line between the two. And to do better, he's going to have to backtrack to where he messed up locally. That's to answer your question. Righty. That was a pretty Thank good question. Thank you. I took, I'm I sorry, go ahead, Coach. Yeah, I took notes uh, and I wrote down these things so that, you know, when we do have our roundtable discussions and our uh, group backing Marcel, we will be able to uh, help him move forward in, in that process. Coach, he's oppositional all the time. It's just one speed. I'm sure if you if you play football or basketball, you know, you got point guards that just go forward. You know what I'm saying? They don't got no lateral movement. They, they ain't got no uh, sham guard crossover. They just go straight to the basket. That's Marcel. Straight attack, attack, attack. That don't work in politics. Politics is about coalition building and not Twitter coalition building. Marcel didn't have one city that he won, not even his hometown. That's a huge red flag for people like me who are saying, hey, should we should should a donor fuck with him for 20,000? Uh, I don't know. He didn't even win his home city. You see what I'm saying? People is watching who got deep pockets and they look at people like me to give them answers if this person is fucked with the bull on a higher level. And he didn't show that. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, like I said, you're making some valid points and, and whatnot. So, um, Coach, we're going to go ahead and move on to um, Sankofa. I know he wants to ask a question, but before we move on to Sankofa, T.S., I see you up in the space. And we were just going at it earlier. And now you know I'm not about to go ahead and let, it, and let you get up in here and troll. Now you can go ahead and you can tweet all the shit you want to about me and this and that and news total, yada, 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 yada. I know, like I told you before, I know you hate you hate the um, heterosexual black men. Everything that's what's wrong in the black community is our fault. So go ahead and 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 blame us for everything that went wrong and this and that. We haven't contributed anything to the black community. We was keeping the black community down. We this, we that, yada, 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 yada. Plus, I know you hate Marcel, too. So even though Marcel isn't straight, you still hate him. So whatever it is. I'm not even trying to have me and DJ been going back and forth with you all day, responding to your little posts and your little, your little trolls, things or whatever. I know if you get up in here and I, I unmute your mic and let you speak, it's going to be a troll session. Everybody in here, even Shepard has a different point of view, but the brother is dropping some knowledge and he is sharing some worthwhile opinions, whether we agree with him or not. At least he's trying to contribute to the discussion. You, you want to contribute to confusion and I ain't trying to have it. On that note, like I say, if y'all support black-owned business, like we all say, support black-owned business, this and that, if you guys have a dollar, contribute it to the Cash App, dollar sign news total. News total is the largest black news aggregator in America, the largest curator of news in America, black-owned platform. 
So if you guys believe in, in supporting black business, support the new black media, support your own, support News Total. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead. And then also, that's dollar sign News Total. If anybody has a dollar that want to contribute to it, dollar sign News Total. Dollar sign News Total. We do not get we do not get advertisement from, from Google and the rest of them and Yahoo and all that. Everything that we make is strictly off of donations from the black grassroots. So if you guys want your own black grassroots media outlet to have your voice, please have our back and just go ahead and contribute. If you have one dollar, dollar sign news total. The next person to speak is Sankofa. Sankofa, Mr. Sankofa, I'm meet your mic, brother. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um, my question, um, oh my bad, I'm trying to get that down. My question is for um, that brother Shepherd. Have you contacted Marcel's campaign with your concerns before now? Any of them? So oh, sorry, but I, I wasn't paying attention. You said, have I contacted uh, Marcel? I said, have you contacted Marcel's campaigns with your concerns before now? So this is interesting, right? So we all on, we all on, um, on Twitter, everybody on Twitter, everybody been in spaces together. Um, at, at the point of March, February, you couldn't offer any advice to anybody. Nobody was really trying to hear it. Everybody was oppositional to anything. So we spoke, we spoke back and forth on a bunch of different issues, but it was not the climate to offer no advice and nobody was trying to hear nothing. So it was just a dead end as far as trying to talk. Like we talking right now? Nah, that shit wasn't happening, B. No, I mean, okay, so you you say like you, you say you work in politics and stuff. I'm talking about like I'm not talking about exchanges on Twitter. I'm talking about formally reaching out to him and his campaign in, in a formal manner, in an organized manner. Have you have you done that before now? Or you know, at any point? I don't support myself. Why would I reach out to his campaign? I'm not understanding the question. What do what what are you trying to get at? What's the well, end, okay, end, so wait, wait, the end brother, result okay. of your question? Are you Brother, trying to say I'm that? Okay, are you trying to say that? that? Hey, um, Shepard, hey, Shepard, let him yeah. ask you the question. Hold on. Let him ask you the question. So, so you ask me what yeah, I'm right. trying to get at, and you say you don't, okay, you say you didn't reach out because you don't support him. You don't support him because of the mistakes that he made. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, no, 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 no. Let me back up. Okay. Um, from the jump, I like Dr. Addison, the second place candidate. I knew Dr. Addison couldn't beat um, uh, Clyde Byrne. But I like Dr. Addison that I wasn't going to in no shape or form uh, disrespect Marcel in the beginning. Now, I'm talking about when face faces just started uh, February, March. We were having these discussions back then. Right. Um, so I like Dr. Addison. Um, Dr. Addison, during COVID, he was out in the community in South Carolina taking care of the elders. And he ran against Hutto and lost for a Senate race. So I always liked Dr. Addison more than I did Marcel, but I always knew organizationally that both of them were going to get crushed by Clyburn because he has the organization, uh, Boule, everything else you guys were saying. So if there was no reason to reach out to Marcel because I said from jump, if you could even go in my timeline and put Dr. Addison, and you'll, you'll see what I'm saying. Sankofa, you got any other questions you want to ask, Shepard? Wait, my bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. My mic was off. But um, so I got the answer to that. Now, you mentioned Dr. Addison, and anybody can correct me on this. Dr. Addison is not a reparationist candidate, correct? I don't think he's against reparations, but he's not, quote, unquote, a single issue candidate. He, oh. he was running on uh, bread and butter issues like the minimum wage, like the price of groceries and, and shit like that. So, no, he, I, I've never heard him say he's against reparations. But what we consider a reparationist candidate is somebody who's waving the flag as a single most dominant issue. So the answer would be no to that. Has he ever come out, has he ever come out his mouth in favor of cash payments um, lineage-based cash payments for the descendants of American slaves, brother. I don't think he's come out, and I don't think he's come against. So, if the benchmark to like a candidate is reparations, there's going to be a lot of people on the ground, especially in South Carolina, who care about minimum wage 
a little bit before something that, you know, they see as a future issue. They're going to be people in South Carolina who care about gasoline and groceries a little bit more than they think of reparation as a future issue. So as a candidate, being culturally accepted as somebody standing up for black people has nuances. And the nuances okay. mean you got to see what's going on in your community. Like, I don't see reparations candidates talking about black on black youth violence and gangs. But in my community, that's a huge issue. So I'm not going to go out in my community at a candlelight vigil where two kids just got shot in their head and start talking about reparations to be a reparations candidate. I'm not going to say, hey, these two yeah. brothers just got shot in their head. We need to get reparations. Nah, I'm going to be okay, like, yo, brother. you know, it's, it's just a simple question, level. brother. That was a simple question. I, I I don't think I asked nothing about nobody going to no um visuals when children get shot in the head. That's a bit dramatic, but yeah, but that's um, not dramatic. Well, well, that's what's well, happening in my community, question, family. Brother. It's not dramatic. That gets to my next question, brother. And in in all of your time and experience, have you ever considered using that time, experience, and skill set? In the, in the work for reparations, either running for office yourself or putting up a candidate to run to secure reparations for black people. Have you ever done that in all this time and experience you have? Yes and no. Reparations is not a, 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 a bread and butter household issue for black Americans in the district that I've worked in. Reparations is the top tier best thing we could ever hope for issue but niggas is worried about the police niggas is worried about getting shot where i'm at i'm a hood nigga at the end of the day let me break this shit down for you so you'll clearly understand niggas is worried about eating where i'm at niggas is worried about if they could pay back consignment to that for that package they got niggas is not worried about if, if they worry about scamming right <laughs> it's not the we're not worried about certain things that, that Twitter is worried about. We surviving out here in Babylon. So it's not, you know, like you asking, like, this shit is something that is going to put food in my belly right now for the people that is looking for opportunity. I mean, you know, I can't really answer you like that, fam. Well, I'm going to be honest, brother. Um, the answers to my questions, you know, we, you talk about red flags. Those were red flags for me, especially in my generation, because we, we've seen too many um, older black nationalists, whoever, politicians, people who telling us they got the blueprint, they got the blueprint or, um, you know, people saying, well, that's that's not important or this is not important. And reparations is the most important issue of our generation, whether the masses know it or, or not, whether the masses can see it or not. It's our job to inform them. It's our job as a generation to push for and to do it like never before. Uh, Marcel didn't I have to go that, right? I brother, agree wait, with you, wait, man. Wait, wait, brother, come on now. You went on. You went on. And I ain't, I ain't going to go on. But Marcel doesn't have to take a blueprint of all the so-called bootlegs before him. And I'm going to say that because nobody has been out here in the paint standing on our issues. Nobody. And that includes you if you're going to talk about on the level that Marcel has done it. And, and, and that's a very red flag to me if you got all these concerns, and but now you want to air it out and you don't support him now and you never supported him then. So why do you care? Why are you bringing up money and, and bringing in the issue of scamming? That's a red flag to me. And I'll land my plane because I don't have nothing else to say to you. Baby. All right, great. Listen, appreciate, listen, appreciate listen, bro. All right, let me let me rebut what he said real quick. No, wait, 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 Okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to keep a little bit of order in here, y'all, because I know Sankofa, Jesse, and him and uh, Shepard kind of had a little, they was going on for a minute. So what we're we going to do, and Shepard, I'm going to let you come back to that. But we wanted everybody, they had their hand up, and y'all had like a little, y'all had a little go around there. So to be fair to everybody, want to go ahead and try to, because we got pro black, Mr. Right. Page, and Ms. Shante. Let's, let's, not, let's, let's not be confused, right? I, I'm not sure if Twitter. People think Web3 is the real world and that the issues on Web3 are the real world issues for everybody. And maybe why that's why it's a disconnect between Twitter and the results of things in the real world. When it's very disrespectful to me, if I say that I've been to a candlelight vigil for two kids, 16 and 17, black American 
descendants of slavery, and you say, I don't give, we don't, we don't give a fuck about that. No, fuck that. Everybody should give a fuck about getting free and stopping our youth from getting murdered. So fuck what you said about anything if you don't fuck with me on that. Because I'm seeing kids in body bags in my community and all up and down the East and West Coast. We losing a whole generation. So if... if Okay, I, I get it, I, y'all. I get it. I know y'all are passionate about it. I don't want. I don't want to get to the, the point that we're doing the mud sling, and that's why I'm trying to go ahead and move on. I feel you, Shepard. I feel that. I mean, you're right. Now we can't sit up here and we can't ignore the death of two, basically two teenagers get, uh, losing their lives like that. And I don't think Sankofa was trying to trying to imply yeah, that. As well. I don't know who these hypothetical teenagers are, and I never said fuck them. Okay, let us go on, Shepard, because stay here, man, because you don't, like I say, you're going to be answering quite a few questions. And let me give a shout out to Y'all Lotus, one of my Twitter followers, for um, for her generous donation on Cash App. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate it. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to Pro Black. Then we got Mr. Engaging, Shante. Um, I don't know if DJ just got his hand up, but but we're going to go. But, but Shante is going to be the um, pro, Mr. Pro Black. Mr. Engaging and Shantae. And once again, thank you to, to uh, Y'all Lotus for your contribution on Cash App. Go ahead, uh, Pro Black, and unmute your mic. All right, it's Pro Black, and I appreciate your news total. Shout out to the Six Zero. Shout out to um, St. Cova and Coach. I really appreciate the questions that you asked because I, kind of, I was right there with your energy. So I have a few things I want to state in rebuttal to Mr. Shepard. The first red flag for me is when someone says that they're – uh, Elder was part of the Eastern Stars. I know what the Eastern Stars is about. Anyone who's coming up here talking about Masons or Eastern Stars, they're literally part of the boule. So it's very funny to me that half of his critiques are, you didn't go up to the right people. That's, that's our point. We're done. Obviously, the people in those high places don't give a damn about us. So I move on from that to say, progress is incremental. You, you, can't, you can't talk down on the progress and not recognize the sabotage. As far as white supremacy, we've been sabotaged every time we try to get something going, every time we build something for ourselves, they sabotage us, but the people who are bought and paid for it get everything under the sun. I don't find that to be a coincidence. So what irritates me about people who make those arguments is we want everything to be perfect before we even take the first goddamn step. We got to take a step. We got to make something happen. And if you're going to critique, and if your critiques are going to be genuine, which is what the Saint, Brother St. Cobra was getting at, why not help? It's so funny how everyone wants to tag along to the reparations um, argument and movement, but yet don't want to support it with action. So I I go on to say, I mentioned the critiquing. Um, As far as him holding on to campaign funds, he can be a forever candidate because half these people up here have been a forever candidate for uh, working against us. So what's the harm in someone who's devoting their life to serving their people? As far as black on black violence, I study sociology in school and anyone who wants to talk about violence, Black on black violence, if you're ignoring economics, you're being disingenuous. Nobody will go and rob somebody, steal from somebody, kill somebody if they got everything they need at home and then some. That's a fact. That's a statistical fact. You can look up any uh, um, resource you want to look up on that. It's literally, literally an area of study in criminology that economics is directly tied to um, violence. So if you want to talk about black on black crime, you have to put reparations as a centerpiece, which leads me to my next point. I'm so irritated when people talk about grifting in the grassroots. We live in a capitalistic society. You need money to make anything move. So I hate this argument of grifting versus not understanding that that's called resource aggregation. If you read Poweronomics, it talks about us pooling our money. This goes into the inappropriate behavior of us not trusting each other with money. Just because somebody's asking you for money does not automatically mean they're going to scam you. I heard someone in, in a few other spaces talk about maybe Tariq is a grifter. Dude, the service that he provided was the movies, was the, the documentaries, was the museum. We we have to give each other a service in order to receive funds. And how you judge someone's character is what happens after they receive the funds. This brother put a lot into his campaign. Valid. He didn't have all the I's dotted or the T's crossed, as you might say. But that's where the people who have all this experience, how about you come and contribute? We always want to sit up and talk. After the fact, after someone else has put their life on the line, their livelihood on the line, and we want to be extra analytical and critique, why aren't you critiquing your Eastern Star people? Why aren't you critiquing all these black people who've been in high places for a long time who haven't done nothing? Because they're in on it. 
And that's why I, it's very disingenuous. You have to support people from the grassroots. It's not bad for someone to ask you for money who's genuinely trying to serve you. This is a capitalist society. Everyone's going to need money to get something popping. So I, we, we got to start with the disingenuous arguments. And once again, when the brother asks you, are you going to help? I'm right there with you, St. Cole. But that, that's what did it for me, man. How are you not want to help somebody that you say you support reparations? And then you talk about this Addison guy. You may know about him on the grass on, on your grassroots level from where you're from, but from where I'm from, and it's just just more on than on Twitter. I didn't I didn't see or hear anything about this dude until a week out of, of election time. So it's really funny to me that he has these connections, and I'm doing air quotes over here because that goes back to these people in high places who have already sold their souls, so to speak. Before you even question me, I'm here to also speak that yes, I am for reparations. Because uh, shout out to you, Aunt La, you got me on this. I'm very big on self-sufficiency. I'm very, I have my own land. I'm running off solar, wind power. I'm working on getting the well put in. I have a house coming in in a few weeks. So I, and I'm not talking a house that I have to pay a bank for. I'm talking, I pay cash for something that I own. And I bring all that up to say, anyone who's trying to start a business to start anything from the grass, uh, from, from the ground up, understands that you need funding. So when you come at someone talking about, oh, I don't like what you're doing with your money. I don't, I don't, why y'all need this reparations? What you going to do with it? Bro, don't ask me that. I need I need funding to get my stuff started. You need you need money to develop your land. So anyone who wants to put anything before reparations is being disingenuous, man. So that's why I say again, with, with the Eastern Stars and all that, we're not here for the bought and paid bootlicks anymore. That's done with. That talented tenth, that that divine, all that crap can go. I, I was I was part of that fraternity um 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 era and you know going to college and all that stuff. But even the fraternity I joined was something that was on the um. That was on the outside. That was something that was started from the grass. That was started from from the ground up. So I don't 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 come don't come for brother Marcel. Of course the man is inexperienced. Of course he's doing things his first time out, and that should be respected, not tore down. I, I'm tired of these people coming in with all these analytics after the fact. How about you get in there when we when we got our head hands in the mud, but don't come out here when we're when you think it's a perceived failure. We have to start from somewhere, and like I'll end my point on that. Progress is incremental, so we have to start somewhere and don't be deterred. I don't want anyone to be dismayed. This is part of the program. We got to stay on this for the next ten years. So don't don't be discouraged. But we're not we're not here for the bull. Miss me with it. Okay, you made a great point there, and the point that you said that Tariq provides a service. Just so everybody knows, News Total provides a service too. News Total provides. Black media, black media outlet curation news from over. 25, 30 sources of black-owned newspapers, bloggers, web owners. So just like you said, to provides the service, and that's not to take a shot at you, Mr. Pro, because I know you're one of my loyal followers. Just so you guys know, we also provide a service, a free service. You can go right to newsoda.com and surf and read articles and go to websites, and it's free. There's no payment wall, anything like that. We will link you up. To, to the top black newspapers and stuff in this country. So News Total also provides a service, a free service. And we also promote we also promote black businesses, black owned businesses for free. For free, we promote them. So we provide a service just like the rest of the new black media. Now I may not be the analyst or the or the uh, the, 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 the the correspondence that the, the black authority and, and, and Professor Black Truth are, but you're talking to the curator here, the curator. So, yes, we also provide a service for any of my followers that want to. And if you got a dollar, go ahead and cash app it to News Total. That's dollar sign News Total. News Total is the largest. I'm going to say that again. The largest, the biggest, the best black owned news curator curation site in America today. Over 20-some articles today was published on Twitter that I put here. By Friday, you're going to have 100 articles from Monday to Friday that's going to be published. Don't rest on the weekend either. Saturday, you're going to get 15 to 20 articles. Sunday, you're going to get 10 to 20 articles. So it don't stop. Even when I was on I was on the field trip with my sons for their school, I still went ahead and still was at Legoland and still published 20-some articles that day. So, yeah, the black news outlet, the black the new black media, we don't stop. We put it out there. Dollar sign. Could, news could, I make one more, could I make one more point too, my brother, News Total, real quick. As far as single issue, we should be single issue um, voters because at this point, that's a debt that's owed to us. Reparations will cover all the problems that we have in this country because it's a capitalist society. News Total will be able to provide you news. 
we'll be able to uh, set up our own self-sufficient towns, whatever business you have or have enough capital, whatever you got going on with your housing situation to be taken care of, we should be single issue candidates because a uh, single issue voters because that single issue will solve all of our problems. And I'll land my plane there. Listen, so, you, all right, listen, so, so let me jump I'm, 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 I'm gonna talk, Shepard, I'm gonna toss it to you. I'm gonna toss it back to you. Let the host add this last point in, and I'm going to toss it to you. You go ahead and you give us reparations, and news told is going to be like damn CNN here. That's all I want to say. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Look, I think uh, pro Am got something wrong. Um, when, when you said something about the Eastern Star and the Mesas, um, Princeville... North Carolina is the, the first incorporated town by slaves in the United States. There's one other town, but I don't think it was incorporated. That's as old as Princeville. That's my lineage. My great, great grandfather was a Mason. This is before the Boule in 1909. I think you mixed that up somehow and projected that I'm, a, I'm in favor of Masons and Eastern Star. Nah, B, not even close. I was trying to give some background so nobody wouldn't hit me with the immigrant shit because I'm not an immigrant. So my great great grandmother was the Eastern Star. That's what you did in them small FBA towns when you was uh, trying to organize. You they didn't have a lot of groups to organize. So they was Eastern Star, which is a perversion of some biblical shit, and they was Masons. Well, we all know, you know, the Prince, uh, the Prince Masons, where that came from, right? So that's what people did back then. So no need to disparage people in the 1800s and 1700s for being Eastern Star and Masons. That's what they did. But let me give you a distinction. The Masons in the 1700s and 1800s, my great-great-great-grandfathers, they built shit. My great-grandfather mortared the church, mortared our family home, sold coal on the side of the road, and built a farm and a business. We had horses, we sold shit, we had a mercantile store in the town. So you can look up Princeville, North Carolina. I think you got it a little bit mixed up. I can't stand the boule. The boule is probably the cause of everything that's happened in the black community that's evil. So you've got me a little fucked up. What was the boule took over for a different group where they inherited black culture. They didn't create hardly anything that they have right now. All they did was stole and got white sponsorship to help them steal. But it was the the, the lodges, the Moose, the Knights of Pythians, the benefit lodges that started all of the, the black insurance companies, the black realties, uh, and moving up. So as those uh, 1880s to 1900 guys started getting old and dying, that's when the white man created the Greek fraternities to take over and pervert the, 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 the shit we was on, which was owning property, which was owning insurance companies, and they took over. So... Uh, back to you about uh, uh, Marcel's situation. Um, don't get it mixed up, man. Reparations to some people is the only thing. That is your opinion. That's only your opinion and whoever else shares that opinion with you. When you are in your community, you know that there are other things that are pressing the neck of black people in our communities. So if you go to city council meetings or you talk to local police, sheriff departments or, or district attorneys, commonwealth attorneys who are prosecuting crime and you talk to community groups or if you own a business in a black community of which I've had six and the shopping center and employed damn near 500 black people in my community, you, you think about issues on a micro level first because that's what affects you. It doesn't mean you don't care about reparations. I'm 100% pro reparations. Will I look at black death and, and these kids out here that a whole football team has murdered each other or or the kid as many funeral, a two year old getting shot and think that's less important than reparations and federal policy and stuff? Yes, I will. And I'll do that every day and six times on Sunday because our kids are dropping like flies. You're a coach or you're somebody in your community and you got ties with these kids, this shit hurts. That's all I'm saying. Peace. No doubt. Let's go ahead and can move I, on. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Can I, can I say something? Wait, Mark, hey, Coach Mark, let's, because we, we got a couple people that's missing engaging and Shantae been waiting for a minute. 
So let's let them go ahead and get a chance to speak. Mr. Engage and unmute your mic. I'm right here. I want to say thank you, brothers, for allowing me to speak. I definitely like the engagement on this. I do have something to Shep that I would like to ask you, like, personally. It's not a diss or anything. Knowing about the knowledge that you have, I really think that Brother Marcel could have benefited um, by being in these lodges or in that such to build. Some fights are some fights are behind closed doors. And it seems like he needs help more in that type of arena. Um, I see a lot of brothers and sisters lacking that skill. Like, I really think that's something that we can benefit off of, but we have to kick the old regime out or build around that. Is that something that you kind of agree with, per se? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there aren't that many people that are willing to, to mentor um, young candidates or give them their experience. When we when we talk about critiquing anybody, the first question is, well, why didn't you support them? Well, I clearly said I liked a different candidate, a candidate that aligned with me, a doctor who was in his community that during COVID, he didn't hide in the house. He went out and treated the elderly. That spoke to me, a doctor who is looking at the minimum wage to help people out and the different things in his campaign. He ain't a perfect candidate. He got more votes than Marcel with way less money in the same community without no Twitter. And that speaks to him actually being out in that community. Only critique I have of Marcel, besides us finding out what his character is made of with this money, is the fact that he Twitter to fundraise, but he did not use the same energy to really be out in these districts. And that's a fact. Yeah, I, the reason why I'm asking those type of questions is because I'm kind of in those type of similar spaces. And I do see some of the discrepancies that go on with like different generations. And I do think that because of those generations are dying out because they're not kept up the way they are, I think it could be used, utilized to our advantage in some regards. What I mean is we should be loading ourselves up with people like Marcel or, or people who align on those type of thinking because it'll help civics. I, I always consider civics the basic building block of politics. If you're a civic game ain't right, your politics is not right. And I look at all those um, lodges and those um, little societies and such or whatever, they're all basic civic groups that are built upon one another. And if you're not building right, then the whole thing is going to collapse. So I, I get what you're saying, but I, I do really think that reparation should be the most focal point. Yes. And it should be, the, and I, the, it, sounds, it sounds crazy. I don't care if the world blows up. I still want my reparations over everything. And that's where I'm at, though. That's but definitely like a capitalist everybody. statement. I can't share that sentiment because I'm not, not I'm not like Peter. I'm not stepping over a human to go save a dog. You feel I'm not Peter. I don't see it like that. If there's blood on the street, somebody got to be out in the street and figure out how to stop the bloodshed. So we all go in separate paths and see the world differently in our communities. But I'm not stepping over no human being getting killed, get killed in our communities for reparations. That's just not how I'm built. And I guess that just comes from being in my community 24 seven, every single day and watching these kids well, grow up. Well, well Shep, what, what's going on is, is that what brothers and sisters is trying to do is get the same vision. Yes, it's, it sounds, it's called tunnel vision. We're just focusing on specifically on that. So if everybody's focused on that laser focus, specifically on reparations, Building around that, building um, building candidates, using societies to help push our policies. Like it should be, a, it shouldn't be an issue where all our civic leaders should sit down, brother. Like it, it shouldn't be an issue, but we all know that it is. These are the type of discrepancies that I see, and in and in, in that needs to be better. They need to have guys like you in those type of rooms who knows what's up to kind of navigate some of these situations. We are in those rooms, man. It's just a matter of people don't, they, they have tunnel vision, like you said. I mean, we are in those rooms, man. We I talk to 20-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 25-year-olds all the time about their civic duty. Hey, why don't you why don't you get on this board and commission and figure out what they're doing with the zoning and housing? Why don't you do this? Why don't you take advantage of this municipal contract? Why don't you get an LLC? I'll help you. We are here, but we're, we're not focused on just one thing. Like the, the appearance of how it is with some of us in this space. 
that's just not effective to us. So you can't convince me and I can't convince you. So we go in different directions. No doubt, what I'm saying no is what, 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 what me and, I'm, I'm going to say what me and my elder is talking about because I tapped in on, he's hearing the conversation too. He's saying we could do both at the same time, but it, it, but we still need to have reparations as a focus. That's We're a multitask help. group. And he, okay. said that's good, and he said reparations is going to help us out with everything. It's not a shot or a diss. We understand that there's bodies on the street. Like we see the same bodies as you do. We see the same white supremacy and other evils like you do. We just think that money could actually help that along us doing our civic duty, along with doing our work. I, I think we could whistle why we could work. I think I think our ancestors have done it both. You're like you, you dig where I'm coming from? Yeah, I'm right. Yo, I love the fact you got uh, your elder in the room, man. Of course, I dig where you're coming from, man. We're not on opposite sides of of ideology. I want reparations too. I'm just my phone keeps going in and out. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, give us one second, Shantae, and then you next, okay? I'm done. I'll take questions or anybody else speak. I'm good. Yeah, yeah Mr. Engager, let's let's let Shantae um ask a question. We need to get some feminine energy up in here too. Shantae, I'll meet your mic. Yeah, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Shantae. I think she's having a problem with her phone. Shantae, can you hear us? If not, we may have to come back to it. Go ahead and, and unmute your mic, Shantae. I see you raising your hand. Can you hear us? Shantae, you want me to go ahead and um and remove you and then you come back up and request to come in and I make you a speaker? That may be what we might have to do. Because um it doesn't look like I don't yeah, think it's very powder. Don't don't ever hit the remove button because that will completely knock them knock them out of the chat where they won't be able to come back up and find it. Just remove her as speaker. Facts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Remove her from speaker, not remove uh from the space or whatever because that will, she won't be able to find it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, but I'll just go to another person real quick. I think she could just come back up on her own or whatever. We're gonna go to um. Hold on. Let me see if I can add her real quick right back as a speaker. If not, we got um, we got a uh, DJ. Did you want to? Did you? Because I saw you had your hand up early. Okay, Shante, can you um hear no, us? No, no, let, let other folks in the chat. You know, I always go last. You know, it's, it's for everybody else to get their talking points off. You know, I'm just here to calls. Okay. Well, um, Coach, you want to go back and speak? Cause you had your hand up early. I can hear y'all now. Y'all can hear me now. Okay. Yeah. Let's let Shante go. Go ahead, sweetie. I don't know what the heck just happened to my phone. Okay. Um. I agree with Pro and the young man, Mr. Um, Engaging. I agree with a lot of things that we said. I don't think that we need to be knocked down or try to be discouraged right now. Now, when it came down to Marcel and he had like $100,000 left in the bank and what he was going to do with the money, I would say like give shit suggestions. Like you said that, okay. He can go get us to some, um, whatever, to like a, um, what is it? A little program or something. Why wouldn't you suggest that, you know something? If y'all really want reparations, how about you go find a reparation lawyer? Sign the contracts. Worry about that right there. After you find a lawyer that's going to sit up there and y'all talking about some people dying left and right, we know that. It's going around in my neighborhood also all through New Jersey, what you could have recommended was, why don't y'all find a lawyer, the extra money that was left over, buy life insurance, so the lawyer could be able to take that on. Things like that. Not talking about no scamming. We trying to- That's illegal. I ain't finished. I ain't finished. It's illegal. I didn't finish. Let it go ahead and finish. Let, let it finish. Even if that is illegal, I dealt with politics and things like that before. It wasn't never illegal for them. They did what they wanted to and shit it right there in front of our face all times. So we trying to build. Matter of fact, I think in New Jersey, and we wanted reparations, I think we got to share that with the Hispanic people. So when you say illegal, it's a whole bunch of illegal shit that's going on around here. So give positive information. 
Just don't be sitting up here dropping bombs on us like y'all can't do this, y'all can't do that. Here's something that we can do, because there's been a whole bunch of legal shit that's been going on all around us, and we've been knocked down over and over and time and time again. So now we just trying to... Who the fuck is calling me? Listen, if we're going to do this, let's just... Somebody calling me, my f***ing acting up. I'll talk to y'all later, but let's have a productive conversation of what we can really do. All right, sister, we appreciate you on chiming in as always, Shante. Jersey in the building. What you said, Shepard? Jersey in the building. Yeah. Shepard, I know you. About Coach. Texas County, baby. We don't know each other. I'm from Brooklyn. Are you from Brooklyn? Well, it's nice to meet you, Shepard. Take out the little basin. Like, you know, son, if you're trying to help the situation, let's help the situation of what we can do. Because, you know, if you in Brooklyn, shit, you flood with a whole bunch of immigrants. And then you probably won, too. I, I chilled I in Flatbush. I've been in Flatbush. <laughs> I've been on Flatbush Avenue. I chilled over there. I used to party over there hard. I had a good damn time. Y'all shoot too much over there. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so if you're trying to, you talking about some of his bodies dropping this way and dropping that way, especially around your neighborhood, we can't even get out the club properly without y'all shooting. So if you're trying to say something, yeah, He's I know. Okay. I chilled over there. I used to hang over there. I had to cross that Brooklyn Bridge and I had to leave off that Brooklyn Bridge. So let's um take way back to the organizational things that we was yeah, discussing that Shante be just uh, brought up. Let's find a lawyer. Okay, then. sis, let me let me let me let me let me cook, okay. sis. Um, so as far as the legal legality and illegal, it's two. It's only two ways he could he could expend that money that's legal. Uh, you don't want in South Carolina, deep MAGA country, uh, Ma Attorney General. MAGA, gup, you do not want to be fucking around with election money in the wrong way and be a, a black uh, a candidate. So you got to really make sure you do what you do or they'll have dude up, you know, back in the day type shit, up in chains. That's South Carolina. Don't fuck around with South Carolina. That's all I got to say on that. Man, you can't fuck around with the whole United States of America. Hold on, Shante. Hold on a second. Now, now, just to reiterate what you said, Shepard. Marcel already confirmed, and I'm not speaking for him. I'm just reiterating what he said, that he did not, repeat, did not reach out on purpose, too, by the way, to white organizations or white folks. He just wanted it to be about us, black folks, reparations, and try to connect with us. So, obviously, he's this is his first go around. You know, you see something you, that you're passionate about, and you just want to step out there. Yeah, you know, he might have thought he had 13 spades and just thought he could run to Boston and just jumped out the window. But, you know, this is the first time for everything. You understand that. Go ahead, Shante. But Yeah, hold on. Hey, Shante, do you have anything else you want to add before we move on? Shante, you still there? Shante? She may be having some issues with her phone again. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, yeah, my phone Coach. acting up. Y'all go ahead. Everybody, I love y'all. Stay positive. My phone acting up, okay? No problem, sweetie. Have a good night. You got that janky phone, too. Jersey. Coach M, go ahead and uh, and unmute uh, your mic. Yeah, uh, just wanted to uh, speak to Shepard because I also know about bodies dropping, but I know on a personal level. Uh, I've had, my father was, was shot when I was 14 and my father was mur was murdered when I was 14. Uh, secondly, I've had two cousins, uh, 14 and uh, 13, that were also murdered. Then also, uh, I am a coach. And so uh, before I started coaching college ball, I started an organization for gang members uh, through basketball. And we helped probably about uh, 30 to 40 young men end up getting college scholarships. But more so than that, we helped save some of their lives. Now, along the way, 
uh, just last year, uh, I lost one of my top players. Uh, he actually was in the game. Uh, his father was shot in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, and, you know, I had to bring this kid in to my own home. He had, he had a lot of anger and things of that nature. But basically just telling me, you know, uh, this kid flipped his car over right before he went to college, and his parents buried him in my AAU jersey. So that was a hurtful, humbling experience for me. Yes, we need we need people who are smart and and inspired and loving and caring. We need them on the, in the streets. We need them on the ground. But one thing that I know. The restorations conversation has to be A1 because if I had that type of resource, if these kids that I deal with, these families that I deal with who are FBA families, if they had those resources, they wouldn't be in the situations that I see them in day in and day out, you know, and I went to different organizations. Uh, I, I even dealt with some NBA players, and they would not contribute to some of the kids on the ground. So, you know, and then we had a couple of guys, they gave a little bit here and there. So we need guys like you who have knowledge and know how to put their hand into this and that. We need you to bring positive energy because that can also help Marcel – even though you may not support them, but we all are black people. We are all in the same situation. Even though there's variations, we are all in the same situation. So if you could add something to Marcel's campaign so that we could add that to some of the different nuances of how his campaign is going, it would be a great help. And so I think that, I think that, once restoration becomes a reality, a whole lot of these issues and problems that we're having, I think a lot of them will be resolved, although not everything will be resolved. And I land my plane. Hey, Coach, fuck it to know, man. My pops was murdered, too. He was, he was murdered, too. Alex, he, was, he was killed as well when I was a little younger than you said you was. So... We on the same page with that, fam. No doubt. I'm sorry to hear that for both of y'all. I mean, that that's something, too, that, you know, I mean, we still have to address that issue of violence in, in the community, too. I mean, we definitely about our reparations and stuff like that, but we also can't ignore that. I can tell you covering the um, covering the news and stuff like that, I, I still get quite a bit of articles and, and things of that nature, so... It's definitely real. It's definitely something that goes on all the time. And it's definitely something that, that, that needs to be addressed and whatnot. Our next person up is going to be Talent. But before we go to Talent, like I say, go ahead. If you guys are not following us on YouTube, please go ahead and follow us on YouTube. And also follow us on Twitter as well. I believe the uh, YouTube link is up in the um, Jumbotron as well. So go ahead and click that and, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. And also, if you want to contribute to the New Black Media and the largest black news aggregator curation site in America, News Total, go ahead, dollar sign, News Total. If you have a dollar that you want to contribute, just a dollar. If you have a dollar that you don't mind using, go ahead and contribute it to News Total. That is dollar sign, News Total. Once again, that is dollar sign, News Total for anybody that wants to contribute. Talent, go ahead and unmute your mic. Man, peace to the room. Uh, shout out to you, Trotter, uh, for curating this space, all the space you create. Real solid, good conversations. Uh, I kind of want to just lead in with uh, a lot of times we get caught up in too much criticizing and not enough contributing. You know, whether it's, whether that's in uh, finances, the things that we support and believe in that can help push us forward, or contributing time, information, energy, insight, experience to people who are doing the work that we see, you know, maybe lacking in certain areas. So like the back and forth I've been kind of hearing on, on the platform uh, versus or, or just added to the back and forth that's kind of been happening, you know, within our space on, these, on this platform uh, for, for a little bit of time now. 
you know, just seems to, to continue that not enough people are doing the work, you know, because we get caught up in, you know, looking at or, or pulling apart one individual at a, at a time that, that is outside advocating for us. And, and I, I don't think that that will, is, will continue to uh, sustain us if not enough of us are getting activated. I think, uh, uh, Shep came in, you know, with the stand self was happening in the community on the ground level. And, you know, Marcel talking about reparations is not going to help our immediate needs. And, and then the first thing I thought to myself was, OK, well, you know, you elect a man in office based on that immediate needs that the community has. How much money do you have to throw at the community in order to fix the situation? Or are you just kind of band-aiding the situation until... You re you run for office again, or until somebody else comes, and now we're just passing the buck of what has not been fixed within the community, and I kind of think that that's where we are. So you have to lead with reparations at the forefront because that is going to seep directly to the community and to the issues that you're talking about that are not going to be resolved with the money that is even being thrown into our communities now. I've been reading about nonprofit organizations uh, who have all these youth programs or all these kids who are supposed to be involved in sports or in STEM or in other areas of out of school activities, you know, where, where, where is that, you know, happening at, you know, like, and there's billions and millions of dollars that come into these urban communities all the time and organizations. I live in New York. You mentioned Brooklyn, you know, like I, I've run in the nonprofit sector out here and it's a bunch of white women, liberals, a bunch of anti-black men, women and people, and I'm a bunch of LGBTQ people in the heart of these hoods at these after school programs. And it's not enough people at least contributing time to resolve these same things that you were mentioning, you know, about other kids in the neighborhood doing that, you know, so as much as we can want to position, uh, let's get a candidate to get some money to create government contracts so we can start funneling some of that stuff into the community. If you from Brooklyn, like me, you already know that that shit ain't solving anything at all. You know, like reparations has to be had in order to to, to stifle, to, to recreate the generational impoverished areas that in one area we may have inherited or in another area was kind of engineered if you compare the history of Weeksville, which is Bed Stock Brown Heights, or to East New York Brownsville, you know, you know, in the histories of black people populating them areas. So I, I think that, you know, the stance of the immediate needs is a Go ahead and spit that shit, talent. I, I, I think the stance of the immediate needs is it's kind of a little disingenuous when we talking about how much money do you need to give these communities to fix the problems that we need fixed. If you just remove talking about reparations at all, you know, you know, uh, and, and I just want to land here, you know, I have an organization called guns for grants. We just launched this year with a partnership with St. Francis college, downtown Brooklyn, where a kid turns in an illegal firearm, they go to college for free. We call it street scholarships, you know, and uh, we, launch in and we launch in July. You know, we have second yeah, amendment training, safety, everything is about fire safety. I don't really get on, on Twitter to, to talk about it that much because I use this platform to kind of really go hard for our agenda and knowing that I ain't trying to get these people to shut us down out here. Uh, so yes, I would I would implore you to kind of kind of connect with me. You know, like we dealing with these same issues uh, of the violence happening in our communities, but I still stand tall on reparations because, bro, I seen the budgets, and, and I think that sometimes we don't realize the things we say when we talk about violence in the community, in the neighborhood. These people get on TV all day and talk about these kids killing each other, and checks get cut from the governor's office, ninety five billion dollars to to cure violence in New York City. That's where I'm at. How much of that money really reached into the neighborhood? And then when it reaches the neighborhood, how many of us sit into them or sit at the direct seat of these organizations to dispense it? And it's not just a turkey drop or a book bag giveaway and, and a computer lab with five fucking computers 
and you look at the budgets of these organizations, it just kind of gets ridiculous when you talk about we need to get a politician to get up there to help with the immediate needs. Okay, so he's going to remove talking about reparations. And now what is the budget that he's supposed to throw at the community to solve the gun violence and the gang issues when record labels are giving these kids millions of dollars? And like, 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 bro, we got to be real honest and serious about what's really going on here. If that if that person going to politics is not speaking about reparations first, then my question to you is, well, how much money is he supposed to advocate out of the budget to throw at us and to throw into the community to get these young boys to stop killing each other? I, that's a good question. I don't remember seeing that I pinned all my hopes and dreams on one New York politician or one any politician. I remember saying in the beginning of the space that I'm apolitical. And apolitical basically means I don't trust none of them. Nobody, period, end of story in politics. For all the reasons that you just said and the reasons Trotter, Mr. Engagement, and kids kid said, everybody's saying the same shit in a different way. It's just y'all saying what you said, but you put in reparations as the, the, the fountainhead of your comments, as the final chapter, the, the last boss that's going to solve everything. But all of the organizational issues that you just said about the organizations we already have, how money gets stolen, how the budgets, that's still going to remain an issue once checks get cut. We haven't solved that part either. So there's a lot of complaints that we haven't even in, engaged with that, that are part of the conversation. Every evil you just named is if if or when we do get checks, they still have to come through in a certain type of way so that it's accounted for and there's still gonna be Boule and every other organization in between somehow of our checks or, or some way. This is one reason why I say that. Um, H.R. 40, for instance, right? The longest bill on the block, the most frustrating shit ever. No Republicans would never vote for this shit. But let's say for a miracle that they do vote for it. All the money that these organizations in COBRA not get to study this shit is going to go to some type of grant to these specific chairs of this organization. It's like that for every single thing, every nonprofit, every type of business. That, that they are in power. So unless before reparations comes, we have some type of revolution to get the people that are the boule and the other gatekeepers out the way, then we won't be in control of anything. So back to your point about politics and why reparations is, you know, should be in the forefront. I still don't see the logic in being community minded second than, and being reparations minded first. But that just comes from my life experience. And I'm not going to tell you, you're wrong. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. All right. No doubt. No doubt. Um, our next speaker is going to be Sankofa again. But before I give it to Sankofa, I just want to thank Aunt Lai, my girl. She came through as always and she donated on the Cash App. Thank you, Aunt Lai. I appreciate it. The sister always comes through and always shows the um shows support and shows much love. So I just want to let you know that I appreciate you, sister. I know you're you're in the chat somewhere. I don't know if you're still in here, but I just appreciate it. So thank you once again for coming through or whatever, as always, and, and supporting the um the, the new black media. If you support the new black media, then go ahead, like I say, and support us through the Cash App if you can. If you can't, we definitely understand it. But if you can, please go ahead. If it's just one dollar. Go ahead and just throw that one dollar to us. It will be applied to web hosting, to email support, to help and curate more content. So if you have a dollar that you guys can can go ahead and loan out, go out, contribute, please go ahead and contribute on Cash App to Dollar Sign News Total. That is Dollar Sign News Total. Saying Kofa, go ahead, brother, and unmute your mic. Yeah, peace, brother. Thank you. Um Okay, so we've been we've been we've been twirled and, and whirled around in really what I can't call no more than really like black baby boomer babble, honestly. And we came, we gathered here tonight to expose the fraud and fraudulent actions of the South Carolina Democratic National Committee and, and Clyburn and his ill. 
We came here tonight to expose them clowns. And instead, we've had Marcel integrity question. We've had the idea of reparations thrown back on the table and whether that's even the most important thing we even need to be dealing with. And I just want us to take note of that, bro. We got to understand. We got to peak game when we see it, man. Like, we can't, <laughs> we can't be so naive and to be asking somebody to contribute who told you they won't support, has talked in circles. You support reparations, but yet you support a candidate over Marcel because of what he did for COVID, basically. You know? And then, I mean, it's just going back and forth. And next thing you know, we're going to have to have a plebiscite. Look like we having one. Look like that's what we have in a plebiscite. I didn't know it was going to turn into a plebiscite. I thought some receipts was going to get dropped. I thought we was going to be digging up these damn clyburns. And I thought we was going to be exposing this shit for what it is. And getting our bag, bruh. I'm done with the baby going babble. I've heard it for too long. I've been in movements and followed all the all of that junk, man. Come on. Uh-uh. No more Baba Day. And I land my plane. No doubt. I mean, I'm going to say this right here. Like, I know we all have different points of view, but most of us are on the same point of view. But I know Shepard, he has come in here and said some stuff right here. But one thing, the dialogue, he has got the dialogue going on. Like I said, I don't agree with everything he said. Yeah, what thoughts? That's true. That's true. But I'm just saying that the one thing we do have to understand, Sankofa, is that we all gonna have differences of opinions. We all gonna we all gonna see things a different way. You know, I mean, I got respect for you. Hopefully you got respect for me or whatever. And if we do have a difference of opinion, we can go ahead like men and we can go ahead and we can disagree. We can agree to disagree, yet we can still we can still work towards a work towards a, a, a purpose or something that we're trying to um trying to get or whatever, like I say. Shepard, um, I don't agree with everything Shepard said, but he did make some points in terms of the overall, some of the other stuff that's going on in the community as well. Like I say, I don't agree with everything he was saying about Marcel and the money and this and that, because let's be honest here now. Let's be honest. Politicians keep a shitload of the money. <laughs> let's be for real here. Most of these politicians, and that's one of the perks of being a politician, is they keep a lot of this money they keep it for themselves. They may turn over some. They may do this. They may do that. But how often do you see a broke politician walking around here? So, I mean, like I say, this man, and not only that, but Marcel, I'm sure, is going to run for going to run for office or something some more. So we have no idea what he's going to do with that money. Nobody has no idea. And I know Shepard was saying, well, if he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, then it doesn't look good or this and that or whatever. But I'm sure Marcel is a smart enough man to know, too, that these white people are looking at him and he has to be careful. He has to cover his ass. So I'm sure he's going to do the right thing. But at that, like I say, at that point, I, I'm just saying that the room itself, and like I say, because when you have rooms like this, normally people, everybody not going to agree. A lot of, and it has, at least it's been, it hasn't been to the point where you had people up here just going off on one another, this and that. Like I said, you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have arguments in a space like this. That was one reason you reached out to me about being a speaker. And I'm glad you did because you have added much um, context to the night. So I appreciate you stepping in here. You and Coach, y'all, y'all have, you know what I'm saying? Y'all really contributed to the conversation. And I'm saying sometimes somebody like Shepard steps in here too. And like I said, he really got the conversation. It kind of got thrown off of what we was talking about because when he came he saved, in there, everybody was like, what the hell? He saved them tonight, bro. He saved them Flatburns tonight. Because we was we was getting we was getting started digging on them, bro. He saved them. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't save everybody. Let me speak real game. quick. All right, so look. Gotta keep uh, game, man. Everybody, hold on, bro. I let you speak, bro. Just be respectful. Listen, everybody ask me questions. If you did, if you wanted to ask me questions about the boule, we could have built just on the boule and the South Carolina uh, election and what the boule is doing. We could have just talked about that. I got billed for that too. So let's talk about that since you think me. And coach talking about our dead fathers having that in common, or, or talent and me talking about a community organization that he has one, or me and Mr. Engagement building about something is boom or babble. Since you think that, let's talk about the boule. How much well, we well, know uh, about yeah, the boule and how impractical the boule are, and what we need to do about the boule. Let's just talk uh, about that. Because any question yeah. you want to talk about them, we can, brother. We can talk yeah, all man. about the boule and the evils of Clyburn. Oh, yeah, let's do that, because that's not what you led with, brother, and that's what led led things left. That's why the questions were provoked, you see? Now, I, I didn't I, lead with anything. I'm, gonna, I'm a man. I speak wait, to what wait, I wait, want wait. to speak to. 
Wait, let's now, go, let's that, go, that, let's that's, go into the well, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, now, now, well, hold on, now, Shepard, now, you did, now, when you came in here, you did kind of have, you, you kind of did have that heat for Marcel, so it kind of did get to that point where when, when you start going in on Marcel and you start saying this and that, that's when the hands just started raising up, raising up, raising up, so... No, I mean, yeah, I wanted to get that out the way because I know everybody knows that I that I'm 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 not a, a supporter. So we was trying to get that out of the way, but I thought we did already. And I don't think I don't remember mentioning Marcel in the last thirty minutes. Uh, not with coach, not with talent, not and Mr. Engagement mentioned him, but I'm not mentioning him. All I said was there was a pattern that derailed this conversation, and the results were that the Clyburn didn't get the heat that they were supposed to get. Now, I go by patterns and results. I think I me, don't know you. I don't know you. Wait, wait, I don't know you. And and Alan, I, know, I think we built, brother. I, I think we had a good you. build. Let's move on. We can, we can sing together, but we can't talk together. I didn't know you, and I didn't know nothing about your support or dislike for Marcel. That's what you led with, brother. I had no idea until you came up in here with that. And you talk right, about brother, you a man. Wait, brother, let me finish. You talk about you a man, and you talk about what you want to talk about. You, being a man also means respecting and recognizing um, that there is an order of things. And but unless you just had your own agenda that you wanted to crash it with, so that's bro, why I say I go about that. Brother, I get it. You opposition to me. I get it. We got that. We're not having the same type of even tone to our voices. So let's just get back to some. Okay, I'm just going to mute everybody just for a second. We are gonna get back on track some, okay? We got a few. Um, we got a few other people that have a question, so let's just go back. Let's let's see, because we got Mister Engaging, we got Pro, we got a uh, Cognitive up, up up in in the spot right now. So let's just try to go ahead and uh, like try to steer this thing back on track. Like I said, I know everybody. I know everybody is emotional, not emotional, but everybody you know is passionate. I should say. So let's just go ahead and try to get it back on track. And then we're going to go ahead and um, try to get back in order. So I'm going to go Mr. Engage and Sankofa. I know Sankofa, I know you and Shep are going to keep going back and forth. So. Hey, Shantae, back up. Can you let her go real quick? Then Cognip. Cognip, because he just came up in here, new speaker, then let anybody else go after that. But well, obviously, we got Sister Shantae. Hopefully, I'm phone working. Well, hold on, because we had um, Mr. Engage was next. But um, go ahead and um, uh, Shantae, your phone is working. Should I tell your phone working? Yeah, my phone working. How y'all doing? I don't mean to be disrespectful, so I do apologize to everybody in the room. Uh, um, Mr. Shepard, I think I do believe that that is your name, Mr. Shepard. When you come in, don't bring in false hope. Now, when it comes down to like Marcel and things like that, yeah, we trying to build back better. Not just putting all that shit up on Marcel. We all got to do better. And I understand where you coming from. Like, yo, you in a war zone where you from. I don't really know too many black Americans that's even left in Brooklyn. It's probably like four or five of y'all. Keep it real. There's not that many of us over there like that no more. So you going so hard in the paint. Well, you are from Brooklyn. Shit, I get that. You're going to always keep that energy. But we not coming off with that type of energy to you. It ain't nothing but love. Like, So we're trying to find I out a it, I feel it, but the brother keeps shooting darts. That's the only reason we just went left. You came out shooting darts from the gate. That's that Brooklyn energy, and you came out shooting off darts from... From the jump. So we was just trying to have like a polite conversation with you. I thought we got and past that like 30 minutes, 40 minutes ago. We've been on this space for two hours almost. <laughs> Yo, you went in for a whole hour before anybody got a chance to say something to you. You know you bullshit. <laughs> no, I'm dead ass. I'm serious. I'm really serious. I'm just a polite person. But you came off hard for like a whole hour before anybody said anything to you. And we let you go ahead with it. All right, Jersey. You got it. How you know I'm from Jersey? I talk too much. That's my problem. That's why I'm going to get off these damn spaces. 
listen, I love y'all and just we just gotta have like a little bit more better communication. And if not, then shit, if you was fucking with the next motherfucker and you don't wanna fuck with your own, then that's your decision. I don't know why you ain't fuck with Marcel like that anyway. It don't matter no more. It just don't matter no more. You make your own decision. We got our own. Y'all, I'm done. All right, Sean, I tell you, sweetie, we appreciate, Carter, appreciate can I, can you. I comment on something that's been bubbing me the wrong way? Yeah, because the misengaging issue will go. But hold on, before you go, let's get the order, everything straight. We got you, we got pro, we got a cognitive, and we had talent up in here, but I think he might have, because he might have had some phone issues connecting. So misengaging, pro, talent, and cognitive. Okay, so go ahead, Mr. Engaging. Unmute your mic. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel this is my personal my personal understanding, and I did make a post about it. You can't be apolitical and say that you're for reparation. You have to be political to be a part of reparation. And I'm just going to start off with that. And I find that very disingenuous that that you think that programs is going to necessarily be like a band-aid towards a serious issue. If it was more or less on a black agenda line, like if it was like within our interests, like if you're doing like like things that could improve the lifeline of the community, I wouldn't be coming at this a little bit like side-eyed a little bit. But I'm looking at it very skeptically because you can't say that you'll be for reparations again and say that you're um, that you're apolitical. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't mix. Get where I'm going at, Shep? Well, let me ask you a question, Mr. Engagement, before we get into Shep. Like, can you be for reparations, but still also, because I understand what he's saying to a certain degree, like, there, there's also other issues within the community that we need to clean up. And I think this is what a lot of black people think. There are think. issues, no, there are, and I will speak to that. There are issues that, that, that do need to be addressed. Those are, wait, 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 hold on, let me, let me, let me, let, hold on one second, Mr. Engagement, let me get this point out. I feel that we have a lot, and I don't know if Shepard, I, I don't want to speak for him and put words in his mouth, but let's be honest, we have a lot of black people in this country that still don't think reparations is a realistic thing that's going to happen. A lot of black people think that you're almost daydreaming and you're fantasizing when you start talking about reparations, and they feel like if it's not something that, that, that can be done right this instant, that can be enacted tomorrow, that you know that it, it, it's, it's pretty much just a dream or whatever, that hey... I don't know, like, they're like, yeah, reparations would, would be nice, but, you know, what about um, me getting a better job? And what about them getting rid of student debt loan and stuff like that? So this is, you got to think, this is the mindset of a lot of black people in this country. They feel like reparations is, is, is just like a, just a dream or something, just something that's not really attainable to the black person. Go ahead and I'm just, uh, go ahead and unmute your mic. I'm just saying what a lot okay. of black people in this I, country I, feel. That's because, that's because we're looking at it from... We're looking at it from an imaginary perspective. We're not actually applying it and actually taking one step towards reparation. That's by lining your like your civic and stuff in your your civic projects and your civic interests into that. Then you build your politics on top of that. Then you layer it with your resources and you support all those type of things. So like like it, it, it's that's where I was more or less getting at. And and I find that it's you can't you have to be political. Can't be apolitical, and and when, when you're talking about reparation, and that's right, why let me I'm ask you a question, Mr. Engagement. that's why I'm standing the way okay. I'm standing on this. Yeah, give him one second, Shepard. Give him one second. Go ahead, Mr. Engagement. That's that's why I'm standing on the, the way I am on that question because I'm, I'm looking at his side. Set you, even I, I'm not a big fan of uh, Yvette Cornell, like, but I do respect her work. She even said it in a quote, and this is a doctor in political science, and she even says that. You can't be apolitical and you pay for reparations. It doesn't make sense. Apolitical means that you're also disengaged from the political process and the system itself. So therefore, it, 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 it has a lot of consequences when you are apolitical. That's it. that's all I want. That's why I said that that him saying that and him saying that multiple times did rub me the wrong way. And it's not in a confrontational, but it's I, I feel like I don't. I don't know if he does know the meaning of the word or not, or understand that if it's being applied, that it it you it re, you won't be applied to reparations. You're not you're putting you're not putting effort to reparations, and you're not putting efforts to, not even to a black agenda. And that's all I was leaving. All right, fair, fair enough, brother. Thank you, man. You are very eloquent, brother, and I appreciate hearing you speak. 
Um, again, I think I am a little bit older than you. Uh, I've been shot twice. I've been stabbed, collapsed lung. I got thrown off a building when I was probably like 14. Tried to kill me, throw me off a building, five stories I lived. I got a different life experience and a different mindset than you. As me and Mr. Coach was talking about our fathers being murdered, you could become a political, you could become a moral, you could become anything with an A, period, end of story. You could become an activist. You could become a cold-hearted serial killer because life has put you into a mindset that is just about whatever you think is the best move for you to make. I know a lot of cold-hearted people and a lot of people in politics. I've been in a lot of back rooms. I've been doing this for 15 years in politics. When you have the type of record you deal with the people that I've been dealing with and seeing what I've seen, it makes you cold towards politics. So I'm a black nationalist, right? I believe in the shit that the Panthers believed in, right? To get yours, you got to rob the bank. You got to kidnap judges, right? You got to blow up police stations. Not that you're going to ever do this hypothetically. I'm just speaking on the shit that was happening during George Floyd, that type of shit. That to me is the type of statement that gets things done. If you ever remember the, that show with Mr. Nancy, he was on the slave shit. He said, y'all in chains. Y'all need to get mad. This guy gets it. You know, the mad guy gets it. The people that's, uh, oh, I'm political. I'm I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican and shit. They don't really get shit done. They end up always just taking the bag. So I don't seen enough of them. I don't work for them for a bag for both parties and independents. And they all seem exactly the same to me at this point, 15 years later. So I'm on. I'm at the. I'm at the shit. I'm seeing so much fucking trauma. Well, so well, much well, blood well, in my brother, community. Brother, brother. They're not all. Don't believe wait, 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 in wait, 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 pass the bar and get into the criminal justice system and get turned the fuck out and end up selling brothers to the system, you know, the next year, the next two years later. Things they said they'd never do. I've seen public defense attorneys come out of their little communist, socialist meetings and sell black people to the belly of the beast. So I've seen the shit that people say they believe in and I don't see it in practice. I see humans, but I don't see humanity. So when you talk about being apolitical and I don't know what it means. Brother, I know what it means, brother. I can teach you a few things and I'm sure you could teach me some. But I'm getting ready to land a plane, man. Don't ever shit on somebody's ideology. Like with reparations, I'm reparations 100%. I want it. I'll fight for it. I'll throw a fucking bomb for it. I'll fucking be in the first charge like fucking uh, the first nigga that Christmas addicts, I'll be in the first wave of niggas trying to fucking get that shit by violent means. I will be there with y'all. But I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket. So I am apolitical to that extent. Appreciate you uh, chiming in and, and giving us that. Um, Mr. Engage, I'm going to go ahead and let you respond. And then we're going to go to Cognitive because he has it. And then we're going to go to, then we're going to go to um, no, my man. It's pro first. It's pro first. It's pro first. Then we. I'm just being respectful. I'm sorry. Oh, you say it's, it's what now? Sorry, sorry now? Uh, pro, uh, the guy with the fist, the pitch in the, he, he goes before me, then I go, I believe. Okay. But I know you were, you just got into the space, so I was going to go ahead. We're trying to get people that have this. Okay. Okay. My yeah. bad. My bad. So I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to let Quad go, and then I'm going to let Pro go, and then Shantae, she's got her hand back up. I'm missing Go ahead and, um, and finish that point, and then we're going to go ahead and, and move on to a couple other speakers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Not all the candidates are the same. Marcel was different. Marcel actually stomped the yard for the black community. Um, so that is a major difference. Another big difference is that he was full-throated about reparations, and he put that as the front of the agenda. Then on top of that, he did go for Second Amendment rights, and he was going after immigration. These are... See, I have no problem if a candidate is layering a black agenda and they don't even have reparation. The candidate that you brought forth didn't have a black agenda. He just had a feel-good project that was going along in the community. And I'm not knocking that. That's a good thing. Like, 
it, like we, we should encourage to do civic engagement and stuff. But my thing is, where's the agenda to go along with it? Where's the where? How does it align with our interests and our political needs in our in, in the greater things? If it's not being built upon, then you're just building things upon sand. That's all I was just trying to get at. And that's why I said that when you're going across being apolitical, you're really disengaged from the system. And this is the time that we should be really engaged with the system and being very vigilant and vetting people and being very skeptical. So as no problem being skeptical about the candidate, it's just, it's, it's only, it only comes across if they're not stomping the yard for us, if they're not doing anything for us. This guy Let actually, me ask you a question, Mr. Engagement. I think that wait, 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 that don't do that, man. Like they have a, they have their own track record, and I just, I don't, I, I just never, I just think that that's just impossible. That every last one of them is a devil. It's just, it's just, that's just moronic to me. I think it's a little crazy. To me. Let me ask you another question, since you think that that the politicians, all of them, aren't devils. Are they all in the, I'm asking you a series. Are they all in the same system? Are they all participating in the same system? Do they all get their money the same way? Is everybody part of this, especially our black politicians, which you guys always talk about the Congressional Black Caucus. Is it a fair thing to say that everybody who votes exactly alike in the, in the, in the caucus are devilish? I, think, I would just say that they might be ill-informed and they might not even really care. And yes, they might have other invested interests. That's a fact. Um, the thing is, is that we need to just replace them. It, we know that they're not good for us. The goal is what are we going to do about the situation to address those types of situations? Having a candidate like Mar Marcel is a good look. I feel as um, people just being discouraging about him um, could actually hurt our chances to have another Marcel or even better candidates that are better for Marcel and that are better than Marcel in the future. So I think that what you're getting at, what you're saying does have merit, but if, at what cost and, and at what cost to our community and what candidates that we want to see and expect in the future? That's more it's or less actually no cost to my community because we, we on the ground, we, we do for our own community. When it's going to be a storm or a flood, we, we do the list of the elders who, who we need to make sure have generators or we do the wellness checks in our own community. So I don't really need a federal or a state politician to help me out in anything, bro. Not for anything. You do oh. need them to help you out because you, one day you're going to end up running out of ammo and we're going to need more resources. And that's just the reality. Everybody else is getting resources but us from the same system. All we're asking is to have the same system work for us. I don't think it's nothing wrong with it. I'm tired of us deviating and putting band-aids on stuff that we actually need to have a surgery on. But that's just my opinion for what it's worth. Okay, well, man, it's a good, get, it's a good wait, opinion of us. Some of wait, us are trying to get free from the system, man. Free from you it. You need to the whole thing. Okay, well, we're gonna move to the next. We're gonna move to the next. Um, to the next speaker. Thank you, Mister Engaging, because we got other people trying to say something that haven't haven't had a chance to speak yet. So, cognitive, go ahead and unmute your mic. Uh, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the uh, space, uh, host. Um, I just want to say, uh, I just feel like we should agree to disagree on a lot of points. I do feel like both those brothers, they are trying to meet at the same point. It's just different ways they're going about it. And also, um, he did make a solid point. However, I don't agree with, you know, both sides. As far as I believe Marcel only got, what, 700 buck votes? That speaks a lot to show if he really was boots on the ground. He, got, he got more than 700 votes, I believe. How, how many votes did he get? He got a I couple believe, thousand. 
Yeah. He got, he got about four thousand. He got about four thousand votes, I believe, didn't he? Oh, four thousand. Yeah, about that. Four percent. Okay. Well, I mean, that just shows that maybe he needed to have more butts on the ground, and uh, I just think we should be more respectful. Just because somebody has something to say about somebody else doesn't mean they're bashing. We gotta, we gotta try to build more with our community. And I'll land my point. Thank you. We appreciate that, brother. We definitely appreciate you chiming in. Um, let's see who's up next. My man, Quad, is up. Hadn't heard from you all night, so go ahead, brother. Unmute your mic. What's going on, guys? Yeah, I just wanted to bring it back to Marcel a little bit. I think for the people, you know, who's criticized Marcel, you know, you know, have we had your critiques uh, earlier? I think, you know, he would have gotten further along. Now, we also got to understand that, you know, Marcel, he only started running six months ago. If anything, I think that his, that's his only fault. Um, and if you look at the numbers, you know, there's 600,000 people in that District 6, and uh, Jimbo Jangles was only able to get 40,000. But that just lets you know a lot of people was not engaged at all, you know. Had Marcel had two years, I think if Marcel had two years, I think he would have won. He could have easily won. And also, I think somebody said, that, you know, if Marcel, just, if he runs again, he'll be a continuous runner. But why is that a problem? You know, Jimbo Jangle's been there the whole time, you know, doing for everybody else, tunnel vision for everybody else. You know, he gives the natives everything. He gives LGBT everything. Why how come we can't have a candidate that does the same for us that's always there? And the guy, and the guy, who's the other guy? Aiders. I don't even know his name. The other guy who ran, you know, they said he had a, more uh, votes to Marcel and all that good stuff. But thing is, he's been a continuous runner, too. He's been a continuous runner too, but nobody mentioned that. So he's a little more well known. And Marcel almost was basically neck and neck with him on six months. And that guy, the other guy, is a continuous runner. I yield my mic there. Appreciate that. I think I think it would do Marcel a good um a good thing to be a continuous runner just so he can be more seasoned and savvy as a politician. Like this is somebody that had no political background, so it can only help him. You know, to continuously to, to, to see to see how things a politician lives and how a politician goes about and how they mingle and, and you know how they, they they network and make connections and stuff like that. And Shepard made some good points about some of the stuff that he could do and implement and this and that. I know Shepard said that Marcel really wasn't his type of candidate, but you know if we could go ahead and relate some of the stuff that that we heard Shepard saying. You know, I think that would pay dividends in the future for Marcel. So it's definitely something worth um. Definitely something worth mentioning and worth looking at. Like I said, you talk about somebody six, seven months ago that just got into a political game against somebody. I mean, Clyburn has been in office almost as long as he's been alive. So think about that. Clyburn's been in office since 92 and what Marcel's, what, 36, 37? So he's almost been in office as long as he's been alive. So you have to think about that, too. So he wasn't seasoned enough, really, you could say at this point, but I think it was a learning lesson. And I mean, like, and like Carl just said, if he had been in all, if he had been campaigning and I would, I say even for a solid year straight, if that's all he did is just campaign and this and that, then, you know, I think things would have been different. And I mean, it's a lot of people that it's a lot of people get handled their first time out in politics. I mean, so this, I don't think this is going to be the last we see from Marcel. And like, like I say, hopefully this is a learning experience. He sees what is ahead of him. He sees how dirty politics is. Politics is one of the most dirty. It's one of the dirtiest games there is. So I think he learned a lesson here, and he definitely learned now that hey, you definitely he was on the grassroots, but he's got to hit it even harder than before. So I think this is something that'll serve him well. And like I say, Shepard made he made some very very valid points about some of the people that he needed to connect with in the local area. So. As long as we can go ahead and relay that message to him next time, I think that really, really, really will serve him good. So, um, real, real, real quick, Tarder. Um, yeah, when I say, you know, some of the critiques that he, he could have gave to uh, Marcel while he was running, but the ones you just mentioned, you know, home connecting with, like, the teachers' unions and all that good stuff on the local level, I, I do agree with that, you know. But, you know, it's growing pain. It's Marcel's first run, and this is, you know, stuff that would have been helpful uh, while he was running. Oh yeah, definitely. It would it would have paid dividends for him, like I say. But what we know this about life: you live and you learn. So he's he's living, he's learning, and he just all he has to do is just put this, you know, put this to use the next time out. And it could, you know, what I'm saying, it could it could play a big role. And not only that, he's going against somebody that, like I say, how much more time does Clyburn have sitting up in here? I mean, he may run one more time, but God, but the man's what eighty two years old, so. 
I mean, how much more, how much longer does he have? Like, I think he really needs to take this opportunity. And this is a time that Marcel needs to really, um, you know, push himself up there. So he could be the heir apparent to that, to that seat down there in South Carolina. It's not easy knocking off somebody that's a, a congressman that's been in, the, in office for 30 some years. Like, I mean, that is very hard. You had somebody out there challenge Nancy Pelosi one time and she drug him from, from, from ear to, from ear to ear. So it, it's not the easiest thing to do. And like I say, I, I think this was a learning lesson. I think he'll put it to use. And uh, pro, I think one more thing. One more thing before I go. Right, that's the last thing. Um, if you do, if you do the math, right, uh, the amount of uh, votes that Kyburn uh, got compared to you know the number of residents that's in District District Six, he didn't. Kyburn barely got eight percent of the vote of all the constituents of his of his district. Yeah, and that's the thing that I told people before, too. One thing we forget is that people don't really, black people especially, don't come out in midterm elections. They don't come out in a lot of these local elections. Had it been a presidential election, yeah. But for whatever reason, when it comes to these these midterms and these, these local elections like that, you have a lot of black people that pretty much sit out and stay home. And that's something that we need to learn on the local and state level, too, that if we're really trying to seize power and stuff like that, especially in counties and districts and areas and cities that's predominantly black, we need to go out and we need to start making ourselves a force. If if we have a candidate, you know, that that, that, that's, that has an agenda that we can back. So... That's that's actually uh, what Carter is saying is it's that's not how it's measured. It's not measured by how many people didn't come out. It's measured by how many people did come out, and it'll never be measured by a negative. So when you say he didn't get but eight percent of the no, he got ninety something percent of the people that did show up because the people who stay home don't actually count. And we know midterm elections are very difficult in the black community. So that's how many people have flexed their muscle by moving the masses in midterm. That's how grassroots candidates really show that the establishment that they, they fucking are a serious threat by moving the people so, in the midterm. So I just when, wanted I, to when, add I that. That, when I brought that stat up, I'm talking about all the potential voters that Marcel can have, you know, you know, in district six, how many people out there have access to, access to internet and stuff like that. A lot of them probably never even heard of Marcel. Had they heard of Marcel, a lot of those people heard of Marcel, I'm pretty sure they would have went out and voted for him. I'm not mentioning dude's name. Like, I haven't said his name in, like, an hour. Y'all keep bringing him up specifically. I'm talking about the business of politics. The business of politics. I don't care about a single candidate. I'm just telling you how it works. Got to get some more people in, all right, and got to be considerate. Um, Brother Mo, then Brother Talent had his hand up for a while. And we also have um, oh my bad Wait, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got the order. We got we got going already. Yeah, we got pro, we got Shante, we got talent, then we got you coming back up, and then we got Mr. Engaging. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go to Pro, then we're gonna go to Shante, then we're gonna go to Talent, Sankofa, and then we're probably gonna have Mr. Engaging be the last speaker tonight. But before we go ahead and give it to Pro. Once again, go ahead and on Cash App, donate a dollar if you guys have it to News Total. That's dollar sign News Total. That is dollar sign News Total. If you guys have a dollar to give to the new black media and to the largest black aggregator curator of news in America, go ahead and donate a dollar. Contribute a dollar to the new black media if you guys have it. Pro, go ahead and unmute your mic. Thank you so much. A lot of a lot of good points brought up. Real quick, I wanted to give a quick shout out to that brother Talent because the work you're doing, you know, giving those kids scholarships for turning in guns. I mean, that's that's awesome. So, to Shepard, man, we've heard you. I know me and you've had back and forth, but you know, hearing you speak, I, I respect where you're coming from. It's just like like the other brother said, it kind of comes off as though you're defending the boule, and that's kind of where the the pushback comes in. So I want to start with saying minimum wage is obsolete in the face of reparations. Student loans is obsolete in the face of reparations. Your, your mortgage, your racial wealth gap, all that's obsolete in the face of reparations. But a point you made a while ago, you talked about how they used to do it back in the olden days. I would I would agree with you in that that's the ideal. When you know after Reconstruction or with Tulsa and our Black Wall Streets is where we have to get back to. But Let's be honest, you know, I can give you the solutions. I can tell you about buying land on landwatch.com. I can tell you about torpedo pot growing your food. I can tell you about different things that are really get you off of the system. And, and that's the real ultimate solution is not being dependent on these people. 
But then you probably turn around and say, man, man, I need the money to do all that stuff. And that's once again where the reparations comes in. So when you talk about um, the politics and the upward climb that we're, that we're facing, nepotism is illegal, but they still do it. And hell, slavery was legal and it was still wrong. So when we come, when we're talking about engaging versus not engaging, you can do both productively. When you're not engaging in the political system, that is where you need to focus on self-sufficiency. That is where you need to focus on making sure, you know, I, I say making sure in a sense, I want people to get to the point where you're not dependent on them. You're not paying that rent. You're not paying that light bill. You're not paying them just to survive. Because like like you sort of brought up with midterm, a lot of reasons why people don't um, engage in that regard is because they're too busy just making it, just making ends meet, just surviving. And that's where the resource aggregation is, is very important. On the other side, when I am going to engage, I'm going to engage with someone who's pro reparations because at the end of the day, like I said previously, that will solve a lot of the internal problems. Like I said, even if you have boots on the ground and neighborhoods and things of that nature, which is great, but you need funding to 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 get people on point. If, if nobody had to worry about their rent, if nobody had to worry about how they were going to get their next meal, people would have time to engage more. That's why with college students, I mean, yeah, when you're in college, you, you have the privilege of having the time to read a book. Not everybody has that privilege to be able to do that. So that's where we, I, I get where you're coming from, but we have to be realistic and be, be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. You have to constantly be working to be self-sufficient so they can't cut you off, so they can't stop you just because they don't like something you said, so they can't buy you out because you have your own land, you have your own kingdom per se, so they can't just they can't just write you off like that. But then on the other side, when we are going to engage, I'm going to be extremely, extremely picky. I don't give a damn if it's Republican. I don't give a Green Party, whoever it is. If you're talking about getting me the resources and funding I need, that's what I need to hear. Because then I can I can clothe my own people. I can take care of my own people. I can make sure they have somewhere to stay and they have food to eat and they have water. But how, who's going to help me get that? I need my I need that check. So give me that check. So I appreciate the room. I got to spend some time with wifey. So it's been, it's been a pleasure talking with you fellas. Hey, bro, you know, keep up let me hit work. you real quick before you leave. Thanks for saying that, man. I respect you too. The only thing I disagree with you is just one simple thing. Nepotism is not illegal. Well, apparently not because he doing it, but that's, that's the thing where they're not <laughs> even going to let us get in to get a chance. And that, that's, that's, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. It's like a, well, Marcel is running, but he didn't get a chance. But it's like what he was running for was worth us supporting it. And like the brother Padar said, the more people who – politics is about name recognition. The more people who recognize his name and recognize the platform, the more realistic support he will achieve. But we have to get there. And once again, when you're not worried about how you're going to make ends meet, when you have passive income, when you have when, – when, when you have a network of people that you're dealing with where you don't have to worry about finances and living day to day – you have more time to engage politically. You have more time to, to to get what you want done because you have the resource to say, hey, news told, I'm going to owe you this much money to keep doing what you're doing. I'm going I'm to give talent, you know, $10,000 so he can keep doing what he's doing. But until I actually have that money to give, I mean, hey, what do I do? So, I mean, and then to the people who say, well, brother, you you know, you talk about all the land, all the stuff you're doing. Hey, man, look, a stimulus check. A tax refund, man. I had to make it happen what I had. I was almost killed by race soldiers myself. You're right. Angry people get it. And I got so angry that I wanted to detach from the system. But like I admitted earlier, man, it's going to take me money to get a well dug. I mean, let's be, let's be real. I, I'm trying to run everything off solar. But I've been running off four panels. I could use a shit ton of more solar panels. Hell, I got a thing called a solar set. I could power a whole city if I had, if I could get my hands on it. But I need money to purchase that. So that way you don't have to worry about how you're going to keep going. You don't have to worry about the grandmothers in your neighborhood. We don't have enough resources to, to get by. Like, like I said, I can tell you all day we need to separate, but I, we got to have the funding in order to do so. And I'll land my plane there. All right. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate you coming up to the space, man, and, and, and contributing. Definitely glad to have you in the space tonight. Our next, um, and, and Shepard, we're going to go ahead and let the people, because I know you've been going like you, you had a lot of time on the mic, so I'm going to let you get it towards the end after Mr. Engaging, but we're going to go talent. We're going to go uh, to, to Colfoot, and then we're going to go Mr. Engage, and then I'm going to go ahead and let you say something towards the end. So when they talk, don't interrupt them. Just let them go on, and then I'll let you get something towards the end, and then my man DJ will get something to the end, and then we'll go ahead, and uh, we'll get ready to probably maybe maybe give one more speaker a chance, but then we may just probably go ahead and close it out. I want to thank DJ, Debrish, 
Ms. Debrich and Mark for their contributions on Cash App as well to the new black media. You guys are definitely helping us grow. Please go ahead. For everybody that's in the space that has not followed us on Twitter, please go ahead and follow us on Twitter. And anybody that has not subscribed to our YouTube channel, also subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Help us grow. And if anybody has been to our website, I also put the newsletter in the uh, Jumbotron. Go ahead and subscribe to that newsletter. We definitely need some more subscriptions to the newsletter. So please go ahead and subscribe to that newsletter. Uh, Talent, go ahead and unmute your mic. Oh, man, peace, peace. Uh, my last statement is going to be, you know what I mean, directly to the title. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if this is going to land in contradiction uh, uh, or pose out contradiction within some of uh, 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 the stances that Shep positioned, but uh, I'm going to just kind of give, you know, the understanding. You know, the boule, the baby boomers, you know, when you think about that older class, you know, statistics, when you think about the amount of quote-unquote wealth or the finest that we have in our communities, about 70-plus percent of the wealth of the foundational black community outside of entertainers and the one-off players that we have in our various towns who make it to these leagues or get a deal, 70 up or 70 some percent of the wealth that we have right now is the, wherever base we are in is in the baby boomer class. That is the uh, first generation affirmative action. That's the city job legacy organizations, the people that give you a nasty attitude when you want to go down to the office to get, you know, the, the you know, like that is who those people are. And from a political aspect, because I have a nonprofit 501c3, this is my first year of getting city funding. I understand that the gatekeepers exist within those spaces. So that is the blue boule. That is the basis. Uh, also the fact that 40% of the wealth of this nation is locked into government contracts. And if you start an organization within your first three years, you can be limited to the amount of money that you can receive. So even if we all, after Marcel does this, yo, we're going to all go across this nation and start opening and starting our own organizations. When we go to the city for funding, they're going to tell us we got to be on three years. I mean, depending on where you're at, you get on a certain probation. You got to advocate a certain way, but you still got to go to the baby boomers and the boule for the money. So even if you in your neighborhood, I want to do this service for the young kids who shoot any guns, da 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 da. How much money you think they gonna give you in your first three years of doing that work uh, 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 to be able to effectively create change? It ain't gonna touch a hundred k. I tell you that you ain't gonna be able to quit your job and work this shit full time. I, I tell you that you know it's just certain challenges within that reality. So from a practical standpoint, if we don't have disruptors rushing to this situation directly pointing to reparations then what are we actually doing we're going to elect somebody with a great agenda that's going to get into congress to what funnel the resources through these same legacy organizations that ain't helping us now out now the same legacy organizations that's just trying to bombard the damn reparations claim that we have literally right now so so it's kind of like no, the boule class, the baby boomers are the gatekeepers in most times of the funding from the churches to, to these organizations that's been around for 20, 30 years. You know, in, in my community of Bushwick, there's something called Bushwick Economic Development Corp. Been around since 1972. We went through crack cocaine, everything. They used to get little summer jobs, but that's it. You ain't never see them outside doing nothing. You ain't see people owning their homes and retaining anything. And then articles come out in 2017 about the director, a black man connected to the church, probably Boule, uh, uh, Eastern Star, all of them. I got invited. I didn't want to be a part of that because I know what that shit is. Literally was embezzling millions of fucking dollars over 30 years. And it is an economic development corp. So it's kind of just like this honest when we talk about, you know, what people should do. No, we need people that are going to advocate. And if you want to take that 100 k to keep being a legacy uh, uh, candidate and keep shouting out reparations and a black agenda without uh, people trying to manipulate his his personal life within what we see happening in the media and societies about these different agenda attacks on our kids, then I stand on that. You know, we got this super nigga syndrome where we just expect people who want to do the work to be perfect. No, and then we just sit on the sideline and critique and then kind of create these stances where it just seems, well, we can't talk about reparations at this view. We can't show up and talk about, bro, I work in community. You know the community. How much money can you literally throw at the hood?
to get these kids to stop doing what they're doing, if they still go to the same schools they go to, if these organizations are still putting up that same bullshit ass work and not doing anything for the teens because they care about these seniors, because all I heard you really mention was seniors and these the kids under 12 years old. So that 13 to 21, 24, left to their own devices, nobody talking about them and you can't throw enough money because my organization gets given straight college access for turning in a gun it's still people nobody won't go to college these kids just want money they want to get a job okay the the the, the poverty rate i mean the unemployment rate in new york city new york state i'm sorry in, in the city of new york is 15.6 percent for black men double the national average then you try to tell them go get a job oh that job don't pay enough they don't want to work there well, go to school, get you some credentials. We're going to walk you through, keep you on the agenda, and come back into the community to work. It literally comes down to how much money can you throw at the system to create the change that you're talking about. And what you said, you don't need the city, you don't need that. So you work in your job and you funding all this yourself? Are you raising money? Because capital has to play a role at some point. And when so much money locked into government contracts, when you want to do those things that you're talking about, which is service providing, solution-based things in your community, you need people in the offices that's going to make sure that bread gets to you because money get cut. We could do a survey from the 80s and 10 now about the amount of money that went through the nonprofit industrial complex in these urban communities in the trillions. And our communities still ain't shit because that money is never really allocated in the correct way. It's never touching the people in the correct way. It's respectability politics and kicking kids out because they wanted to wear a hat in a building and after school program. Or because they came in with their pants sack. Ain't these the kids you're supposed to want to deal with? Ain't this why the money's getting cut? But these are the ones that they rather let be outside these centers smoking weed outside. Like shit real. And a practical thing that you're saying, I understand the critique in some aspects, but you really got to get activated and engaged. And we could get an update to this room a year from now, lock in with what we're doing in Guns for Grace in Brooklyn, foundational with all the agendas around us. Everything is people of color, brown paper bag bullshit, brown and black people and everything, small hat ran. Like, like bro, it's way bigger than us just coming to the community to organize to do what the Black Panthers did. They started with free lunch. And they still got took out on some real shit, bro. Appreciate that, talent. Definitely. Thank you for going in. Definitely letting us know. We know that money never gets back to the places that it needs to get to. And that's one reason that we in the despair that we are right now. So, and that's one of the main obstacles you do have to the reparation movement because then the money would actually be coming to the people who actually is supposed to be going to. So, you got a lot of people that would be upset about that part, too. So, and, and a lot of people that would lose their jobs. My last point, what I want to say is that we like, like looking at this from a realistic, real honest standpoint, us getting reparations is everybody who pillages and benefits off of our oppression loses a job. We're talking all on money. Many people who voted for Clyburn would know we Marcellus get an office. Certain checks ain't getting cut to our legacy organization. Certain pockets are not getting aligned. Black people get reparations. Oh, wait, it's a whole new game changer because now I ain't got to wait three years to go through your political process in order to do something for the folks. We can literally just provide the services that we need and that we know we need. That's why the grassroots never get the bread because they know we got the answers. We on the ground. Like, shit ain't the way it is by accident, bro. And that's Boule Baby Boomer control in many aspects. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate it, talent. Appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you for um, giving us a little bit of information about that and dropping some knowledge. Definitely appreciate it. And definitely thank you for your contribution to the space tonight, guys. Like I say, it's been it's been a great conversation tonight. I know, like I say, there's been a little bit of back and forth and stuff like that, which it always is. But you know, it, it, sometimes it's healthy to have that type of dialogue. Saying, Kofa, go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey, uh, real quick, thing, Kofa, brother. Hey, Fallon. Hey, Fallon. Hey, Fallon. Hey, Fallon. Hey, Fallon. Hey, Fallon. Hit me in the uh, DM, bro. I got some information for you, all right? And Sankofa, before you unmute your mic, let me just go ahead and thank David for his contribution on Cash App. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, David. And to anybody else that can, go ahead and it's dollar sign news total on Cash App. Dollar sign news total. Try to help us the way the white folks help PBS when they go ahead and they send in funds for them to keep them on. That's dollar sign news total on Cash App. Dollar sign news total. I appreciate anybody and everybody who has contributed tonight to the um, Cash App. 
once again, that's Dollar Sign News Holder. Sam Kofa, go ahead and, 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 and let us get a little bit of information from you, brother. Now, I just want to leave this final word with, with, with my people who are going hard for reparations. You support Marcel. Um, I just want to say stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Do not <laughs> let nobody derail this this train. I was about to say something else. Because we, we don't just need one Marcel. We need many Marcels, um, you know, in different areas of this country. So um, all, everything else, I'm gonna, and I'll say that we have done, there's been no blueprint. Nothing has come, come before us to this magnitude in our modern era. Okay, and, you know what I'm saying? Since since like movements like Marcus Garvey and some other um about you know our elders and stuff. So don't 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 get sidetracked, man. Stay focused and stay on these reparations and stay stay on this thing. And and, and especially look at patterns and results. Don't just let nobody just talk in circles and tell you one thing and then they um switch it around and say something else. Like if it ain't about reparations, if it, it ain't about the agenda, then let's look at the track record of it. Definitely agree and definitely saying Kofa, thank you, brother, for being a speaker tonight and coming through and, and providing that dialogue and, and whatnot and, and just being a steady force here in the space tonight. So we definitely want to thank the brother Sankofa for coming out and contributing to the space. Mr. Engaging, we're going to go ahead and let you go, and then I'm going to let Shepard get a, a final word in there as well. So, uh, Mr. Engaging, go ahead and by, in, in about two minutes, go ahead and sum up what you got to say. Okay. Like, again, with some of these organizations or legacy organizations, they're missing it and lacking a black agenda. And what I mean is we could compare it to, like, Marcel's campaign. Imagine if the NAACP in the community was telling them to get out and vote. Not really per se telling the candidates, but actually encouraging a, de uh, a debate between Jim Clyburn and actually with Brother Marcel. I think that these would be the things that would be great in the Black agenda to actually push our politics along in lockstep. And that's what I mean by organizations have to be kind of on code and interacting with each other. And also, Brother Shep, you have a um, black man who right now who's a president of the organization called Lions Club International. He hasn't probably done anything for your neighborhood like that or advocated the way he ought to. Um, this is the same guy who pushes policies for Ukraine on a civic level, saying that we should donate to them. It's a problem, brother, with these baby boomers. And it is something that it's the detrimental to our generation we have the technology we have all this stuff that's for us and if you're not on board then yet yeah, it, it is a hindrance to the community so I, I think that we need to have brother marcel in different spaces such as like the naacp not be an active member but actually sitting there and engaging but not really engaging but knowing what's going on um, he might be able to influence these organizations to help empower his campaign. So just something that I just suggests. Absolutely. No, we definitely, like I said, we still got work to do, man. So we're not there. We're not anywhere near the finish line. And like I say, we were talking about it yesterday. This is a marathon. This ain't a sprint. So it, it's taken us hundreds of years to get into this predicament. And it's gonna be it's gonna take us some years to get out of this. So we just have to be willing to put in that uh, put in that time and that effort and that work. Shepard, I'm gonna go ahead and let you um go ahead and um, get your last word in here. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Uh I mean it's a lot of good information. Even from the brother uh uh with you know, shooting his pistol at me. It's all good information, man. Um all right, so my great aunt was killed by Jim Jones. I was a little, I was a little, little kid. I remember how that shit devastated my family. So I never trusted pastors and groups and even even gangs, even street gangs or even drug crews. I always wanted to do my own thing because I never trusted none of the, the big groups and shit because if everybody starts saying the same shit, and putting the same profile picture, well, it wasn't profile pictures back then, wearing the same colors, 
and doing and, and, and speaking in the same exact manner. There's always this charismatic person that rushes to the front or is in the front and is and is going to be the leader. And that person always can't do any wrong. And that person always got the final authority over what the code is, over who's off code, who's on code. It's always this one person. I see it in mega churches. I see it in nonprofits and NARC and in Cobra. I see it, you know, you see it in the Senate. You see it in the House. You see it locally with the mayors and the people that get worship, whether they do right or wrong. They still going to be always somebody's going to cap for them regardless. And black people especially I seen it with Father Divine. I seen it with Reverend Ike. I mean, we just, I seen it with Clarence 13X, uh, with the gods, the nation of gods and earth. And every movement that's ever had a blacks in charge, we always gravitate to this one central person who's gonna get it all done for us. So when my, you know, my great aunt was killed, you know, my grandmother, my grandfather was was devastated uh by that shit. And that shit kind of imparted something in me about not being trustful of anything that seems cult-like, you know? And that's just a part of who I am. We all got our different traumas. Um, I live a different lifestyle than a lot of people. Um, like, I met Mandela in Brooklyn when I was probably nine or, or eight uh, because my family was always connected in politics, but it's always street thuggery, type politics, not not Democrat or Republican. Like my family, when I was a little kid, we took over a whole armory at Brooklyn and the whole shit, 70,000 square feet and, and niggas had guns. I was I was a kid seeing my my family shoot at drug dealers, that type of shit. Like I told you, I'm a Panther Cup, so I got a different ideology than a lot of people. My shit is militant. It ain't, I'm, I'm not on the shit that a lot of people is, is on. Like I met Mandela like, and the whole the whole neighborhood in Bed Stuy at Boys and Girls High School that day, all the violence stopped, and everybody in our entire neighborhood and entirety of Brooklyn stopped fucking killing each other for that one fucking day. And then the next day after Mandela left, it was back to normal in the hood. So I just got a different ideology, man. Um, I'm not the talker dude. This is the first space I really talked in in a while and really built built in. Um, right now my family is doing a street festival. It's the 40th year of the street festival. It's called the African street festival. And it's at Commodore Barry park. The way I met Mandela was through my family. When my family was doing it in boys and girls high school, we bring 700,000 people out. It's all black FBA ran. It's all black FBA ran. We bring 700,000 people out to a million. Like, like the, the way I'm talking is just come from my life. And I, I don't expect you to understand me because your lives are different. My life has always been in the middle of some fucking street militant politics shit. So I don't understand y'all. Y'all might not understand me. You know, the, the Black Veterans for Social Justice, like a 40-year-old organization, that's my family. Like, that's some street thuggy shit. Like, they had to fight for that. Like, all my all my heroes, they, like, like Chuck D say, they don't appear on no stamp. Like, all, all the people I know... And my family is incarcerated, you know, on some shit from back in the day, the militant shit. So asking for a check from blue eyed devils, haters, I'm sorry. It's not my like priority in any way, shape or form, but I don't disparage if that's what you choose to do. So don't disparage if it's not my fucking priority. That's just, my life is just different. Dude was asking me about funding. I think that was talent or the other young brother. I don't need funding. I, I'm, if you look at my bio, it says philanthropist. I've owned shopping centers. I've owned multiple barbershops, multiple restaurants, clubs. I've done all of that shit. I made my money. You know how we make our money. I made my money and I'm good. I'm good. So I don't need this shit that y'all saying. How will it get done? It'll get done the way black people have always got it done in that secondary underground economy. That's the shit that we on. So... People live in different lifestyles. You can't say all this shit on Twitter. But don't disparage people because they don't agree with you. They can still be an ally in a different way. I'm just not going to put the shit that y'all are on and keep calling the same motherfucker's name over and over. I mean, I, when you 
If I go back on this space, y'all call one person's name like 95,000 times. Like, I'm not on no shit like that. Like, even after I said what I disagree with dude about, I left him alone. I never mentioned his name again. Like, that's, I'm not on it like that. Like, I told you, I'm not a joiner. You know, when your family get killed by a cult member, then you, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I'm landing right here, man. I respect y'all, respect me. That's it. No doubt, no doubt, brother. Like I say, um, I mean, like I say, everybody's opinion is respected in the um, is in the Twitter space. And if you own all of that stuff, like you were saying, the shopping centers and this and that, then go ahead and definitely make that um, make a, a contribution to the new black media, to news total, dollar sign news total. If you had it like that, brother, go ahead and definitely go ahead and shoot something over the news. So if y'all was on the shopping centers and all of that other stuff, so I mean, DJ, I'm gonna go ahead and um. Let you go ahead and say something, then we're gonna go ahead and um close it out. You there? Yeah, we're good. Uh, you know, just to try to stay focused with the topic at hand because we kind of fell off track a little something, you know, speaking on a Marcel situation. Um, I feel like that brother was rough, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? I also understand, you know, what you're saying to uh Shepherd as far as like certain organization stuff. I get that. Because you got to be organized in order to win. You need a team for that. That's true. But when you say things like, and like you said, this is not the go on you. We're just going on the talker points or whatever. So when you say things like, okay, you never really gave a real reason why you don't like Marcel. And whatever that reason is, you don't have to explain it. But if you say you are politically neutral and you are black, FBA, ADOs, or whatever the case be, black America straight up, you know what I mean? You got to go help your brother. You feel what I'm saying? Just as well as you said, you, you kind of had a, a a leaning towards the Addison guy. You got to have the same respect for Marcel and tell him the same thing and just let him go ahead and do whatever they want to do with the information. As long as you did your part and you told them. Because the longer you step back and come up on spaces like this and say, hey, well, look, I told you so, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't tell me anything, though. You only might have tweeted it out once. You didn't come at me and say, hey, look, bro. This is what you're really supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? This is the real deal fucking shit right here. Check it out, bro. I got you. You know what I mean? This is why I made a video called How to Make Money Off Your Talent. So I could get everybody's personal skills and say, hey, damn, Shepard, you sharp as fuck with this political shit. You could teach people this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if I could get you on tape saying some of the shit that you're saying and we could go out and hand it to these reparations candidates. You know what I'm saying? And teach them the game and shit. You feel what I'm saying? And it seems like you're living by, you know, the game is to be sold, not told. I'm trying to tell a nigga the game because I can't take none of this money with me, bro. Like you said, we've been getting money. You can't take it with you when you're gone, nigga. But I live there. Love everybody. Reparations up. No doubt. No doubt. Right. Once again, that no doubt. Um, And we want to, we appreciate everybody who came into the space tonight. Like I said, you guys can contribute to the new black media, to News Total, the largest, biggest, best news aggregator, black-owned aggregator, curator site of black American news in the country. That is dollar sign News Total. If you guys have not, please go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's also in the Jumbotron. Also subscribe to the newsletter. That's free. If you're not following us on Twitter, go ahead and make sure you're following us on Twitter. If you have an Instagram account, you can follow News Total on Instagram and Facebook as well. Go ahead and help us reach, help help, help increase our reach, help the black media um, put out more and more content. Like I say, please, we appreciate everybody who came in tonight and contributed, whether they just listened, whether they spoke, whether they contributed on Cash App or not. We appreciate all you guys for coming in. So thank you once again. And like I say, you can contribute to News Total, dollar sign News Total. And that will conclude tonight's Twitter space. We will see you guys tomorrow. The topic we do not know yet, but we'll come up with something. So I would appreciate all of the speakers tonight. And Shepard, if you get a chance, I know I know you're kind of controversial, but make sure you stop by tomorrow too, man. So like so we can hear your opinions on whatever it is. I'm sure you're going to have an opinion on something. Like I said, you were balling like that, bro. Go ahead and, and shoot something to the News Total Cash App as well. Dollar sign News Total. And once again, thank you guys for coming in, and we will talk to you and see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Peace. Have a good one.